Welcome to the inaugural CanadaFootballChat.com Prospects Game. I'm coming for you. of the Rideau Canal here in Ottawa. It is rainy, but inside TD Place, the present and future of Canada's football talent is bright. It's the 2022 CanadaFootballChat.com Prospects game, and it starts right now. Welcome inside, Canada. Good to see you again. As that tease had off the top, 2019, we did see over 70 of the best prospects from Canada's high school football. Maybe an indication that we're getting back to a little bit more normal is a little bit more football. And that's always great to see on the field where the Red Blacks play here in Ottawa TD Place in Lansdowne. And we are going to have some of our CFL on TSN talent on the sidelines again. David Sanchez is taking over for Henry Burroughs on one side, but Matt Dunnigan is on the other side. There's going to be excitement, you know that. And in the booth, well, we're going to have the 2017 BC Provincial coach of the winning football team, the Hayek football team, Farhan Longy. And the Vanier Cup and Grey Cup winner and our CFL on TSN draft guru, Dwayne Ford. Gentlemen. Well, one thing we knew that somehow Davis Sanchez was going to find a way to get the more high-profile players, but there's plenty <laughs> of good ones in all of this, led by a couple of talented receivers. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll start on Team Sanchez yeah. because Davis would have it no other For way. Sure. We're going to talk about Nick Shuchuk, receiver, primarily a receiver from Salisbury High School in the Edmonton area. Uh, outstanding player, obviously, in Alberta. Came in here as a slot back. That's his primary position, but he's a guy who's been a standout there but also when they suffered some injuries in the defensive backfield during the week, he jumped over and played a few different positions, primarily halfback in the defensive secondary. We expect to see him get a couple snaps there as he pick, was picking off practice passes during Skelly and so on. So a great two-way player, high-end performer. Yeah, and as far as Blaze Cameron as well, a, a tight end, a big physical target, he's made an impression in some very high-profile games against U.S. opponents. Yeah, and Blaze Cameron plays at Clarkson Football North in Mississauga, but he actually moved there from Saskatchewan mm -hmm. in order to get into some of those those high profile games get a little bit more competition get some exposure as he tries to pursue a, a division one scholarship as you said he's, he's a big target um, one of those guys who definitely looks the part so I'm excited to see him in action another guy who looks the part Antoine Delore at linebacker this guy dislocated his thumb a couple of days ago he practiced with it still dislocated and would not miss this game for the world I'm not sure his coach Davis Sanchez ever demonstrated that type of toughness Matthew Shinetti though in the rain we know how tough you are my friend I don't know if I could do it with a broken thumb, but we'll try it holding an umbrella in the rain. The great talents of Canada's high school prospects are coming up. Kickoff is next. Welcome back to TD Play Stadium. Canadian football is back on this final weekend of May. It's not a CFL game, but potentially some future CFL stars. We have got 70 of the top young high school players in the country gathered together here. They've been here for the last three days getting ready for this game. It's going to look a little bit different, Dwayne Ford. Defensively, you're not going to see as many Chris Jones type of pressure looks. Only a four-man front up to one blitzer. For the offensive side, you're not going to see all the cross-formation motions. Our receivers can still motion towards the line of scrimmage then. And as far as kickoffs are concerned, we're not going to see any teams will scrimmage from the 40-yard line. After your first touchdown, you must kick a PAT. After that, the coaches have a choice. And if we get to overtime, each team has just one play from the three-yard line. Matt Dunnigan trying to improve on his 0-1 record at this game after he got beat by Henry Burris a year ago, or well, 2019. <laughs> well, fancy the beard on Matty. You know, he's been holed up, getting ready for this one, living like a hermit, because he does not want to lose from that man who's usually down the desk from him, Davis Sanchez. A contrast in beards with the two. Again, no kickoff, so it is going to be the red team coached by Matt Dunnigan with the football first. 
Nicholas Panuchek with the first pass of the day. Aaron Watson, or Ashton Watson, I should say, with the completion. Pretty good gain after he breaks a couple of tackles. Good first play to start this game. Yeah, I love the elusiveness of Ashton Watson out of St. Andrews coming out of that backfield. You're going to see him lining up in the backfield just to the quarterback's left, screen right. Free release for him. Quick shot, high percentage throw from Panachev to get him a little bit of confidence, get into the flow of this football game. Matt Dunnigan over the last couple of days has dubbed Panachev Money Penny. <laughs> from St. Michael's College in Toronto. Yeah, great football history at that school. Well, we got some motion in our first flag of the game. That didn't take long. Panachev on the roll, wisely throws it out of bounds. Receivers with a good job in coverage. We have a penalty flag on the play. Might be a late hit on that one. Gabriel Andre with the tackle. Maybe a little bit too late here. So we'll wait to hear from our officials. There are two fouls on the play, one by each team. Offside on the offense. Unnecessary roughness, roughing the passer on the defense. A difference of 10 yards, first down. But I think you're seeing a couple of couple of penalties that relate maybe to the early excitement, early jitters in this football game. You mentioned Gabriel Andre from London, Ontario. Coming off the edge, wanting to get a little bit of contact, puts the hit on the quarterback. And we just saw the receiver a little bit early in his pre-snap motion, getting used to cadences with quarterbacks they've only practiced with for a couple days. So we may see some hiccups like that. Had a chance to speak to Panachev the first time when he was at the CFL draft. Lee Barrett, who runs this game, brought a few of the top guys. That is Ashton Watson again from St. Andrews. Bounces off a couple of tackles and another good gain after initially it looked like he didn't have much. Yeah, again, showing that elusiveness. We saw it when he had that catch on the opening play out in this flat. Made a couple of would-be tacklers miss. Here, keep an eye on number 15 from the linebacker spot, Antoine Delorier. And the top guys in this ball game, nice spin move from Watson to avoid being stopped in the backfield. I think we're going to hear that name a lot tonight. Second and short. So they give it to Watson again. He's got some room, a good hole on the play, opened up by the red team's offensive line, Grayson Peters from South Kamloops High School in BC with the tackle. Yeah, I got a chance to talk to Grayson Peters a little bit yesterday. You see the, the locks flowing out of the back of his helmet. It's an Okanagan thing in British Columbia. We saw Nolan Ulm a few years ago. We all know Taylor Loeffler from Colonia. He had the long hair when he played for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, so it's a thing. Yeah, it's working for him. It's working for him. A guy who loves a little bit of contact, so good to see him get involved here in the opening series. First down at the 35. Red team on the move. Panachev rolls to his left. Has a receiver. That is Charles Williams with the reception. Williams from Notre Dame in Montreal. Yeah, great to have players from Quebec involved in the game this time. There's some scheduling conflicts with provincial tryouts and so on that kept a number of the Quebec players from being able to take part in the 2019 game, but obviously a, a province that has contributed some great football players at the U Sports and CFL level, and great to have them with us here at the high school level as well. Panachev under center this time. It finds Watson, who finds a big hole. He could go to the five, into the end zone. Touchdown. Ashton Watson opens the game with a 27-yard touchdown and a little gritty. Uh, you know, we see Coach Matt Dunnigan over there, and you think about this matchup and teams wanting to maybe be built in the mold of their coaches. Well, it, we open with Matty Dunnigan, a quarterback, his offense going against Davis Sanchez, a defensive back, and his D on the field in round one. Goes to Team Dunnigan, Ashton Watson from St. Andrews College in Aurora, Ontario. The key player on the opening drive. You see his acceleration out of the backfield. Lanky looking guy for a running back. Doing a great job constantly making the first man miss. And that time, pure speed, pure explosion. Number 34. That drive, six plays, 70 yards. 243 is all that it took. Pretty good way for this game to begin here because you thought with just a couple of practice days it might be a little rough. Not so much though. Jaden Rice with the PAT attempt and it is just wide. I told you, you're taking it all the way. That's what you're the red you're team led by Matt Dunnigan with a good start. Ashton Watson letting everybody know he is one of the best. Six nothing red to open the game. No good. Your score. 
Well, one of the things, Farhan, that stood out to me coming into this football game was the size of some of the offensive linemen. Keep, keep an eye here on the left side of the team Dunnigan offensive line. All BC left side to start this game. So Much love Sibold. to BC. There you go. Big Sibold, six foot seven, 340 pounds at left tackle. Logan Thiessen, terrific player as well at that left guard spot. They open it up. Watson does the rest. Watson's teammate, Anthony Leo, under center. What a big defensive play to start this game. Vincent Bronner from GW Graham High School in Chilliwack. More BC talent on the field right there as he opens the game with a big tackle for loss. Yeah, I had a good chat with Vincent Bronner yesterday. And he, you know, talked more about pass rushing, but obviously demonstrating there that he's a guy who can play the run as well. You'll see him lining up at the defensive tackle spot to start. Trying to take advantage of his quickness, slicing into the backfield. His GW Graham team won the BC AAA Provincial title in their first year playing at the AAA level. Great job with the growth of football in the Chilliwack area. Meanwhile, Leo drops back to pass. Has a receiver over the middle, but that one is broken up. Nevin Brown with the pass deflection from Dakota Collegiate in Winnipeg. Matching the big start by their offense team, Dunnigan's D comes up big with a quick two and out there. Looked like a pretty good look there for quarterback Anthony Leo. We got him. We got him. We got him. For our guy Nick Shuchuk, but just unable to connect there, as you mentioned, Nevin Brown. Lucas Scott back to punt. Ashton Watson among those deep. Matthew Jonah. Iliwe as well. No, no, no. Bit of a shank there. Not sure we're going to see a, a big return. Watson, though, does pick it up. And he gets brought down. Red team with a good start on offense and defense and good field position when we return to Ottawa. The first quarter of the CFC Prospect game is brought to you by Augusta Sports Brand, high-performance athletic wholesale apparel. Red team starts on the other side of midfield here and a new running back into the game, Paul Condon from Rockview High School. Panachev drops back to pass. Short hops that one. Intended receiver was Blaze Cameron, who we talked about in the opening. We sure expect to hear a lot of his name today. Yeah, I certainly do. Cameron, the total package, good size, speed, athletic player. Primarily seen as a, a tight end inside receiver type. Anything on our side. Second and 10, they were able to control things with the run game on that first drive. This time they're throwing it out, this time the screen, which goes to Condon, but it is sniffed out right away. Antoine Delorier, we also talked about him early on, and you're going to hear a lot about this kid, and he's only in the 10th grade, Dwayne. Yeah, one of those guys who really popped out. I walked out onto the practice field yesterday and, and talked to Coach Chez, and this was one of the first guys he pointed out to me, and exactly as you said, only in grade 10, and as Chess says, this kid is jacked. And we're looking at him from the other end of the field, and you can see, could tell from, honestly, 100 yards away, yeah, this is a young man who knows his way around the gym. Nicholas Dawkins punting. Deep to receive for Team Sanchez is uh, Shenny Atacule, along with Tayshon Orokadudu. You're going to love those names over the course of this day. Well, these guys play together, actually. Punter and the two returners all play together at Harry Ainley High School in Edmonton. Punt gets to about the 30. Everyone trying to get away from it to avoid the New York's call. Atakunle with the punt return for minimal gain. We do have a flag on the play, which we expect will be no yards. No yards line, line, on the line, kicking line. team. No Five yard penalty, first down. You mentioned the Quebec players that are here for the first time. They weren't able to participate back when we did this game in 2019, but players from all across the country here. Yeah, and there you see the, the distribution of players by province. 
half of the players from Alberta, half of the 16 are from the same high school, eight players from Harry Ainley High School in Sherwood Park, where Brock Ralph, former CFL uh, player, is an assistant coach. That's Nick Shuchuk. We talked about him early on as well. This kid is an explosive athlete. He's going to line up all over the field, and you're going to hear a lot about him. Yeah, Nick Shuchuk out of Salisbury High School, Sherwood Park, Alberta. You know, and he likes these quick routes, get the ball in his hands, try and make some people miss. But we expect him to be one of the go-to receivers for the Team Sanchez quarterbacks. 14 yards in that first play. Again, Anthony Leo from St. Andrews. Under center for the second straight drive here. Drops back to pass again. Scrambles to his left. Has an open receiver, but decides to take off and run with it. A real strength of his as he's forced out of bounds. Yeah, this is a big part of Anthony Leo's game. He's taking advantage of that athleticism. You can see not the tallest quarterback, so at times likes to move that pocket a little bit, improve the line of vision for him. A lot of run pass option talking to Anthony yesterday. That has always been part of his game, part of his strength as a quarterback. Coached by his dad, Marcello Leo, which will be a familiar name to those uh, who follow amateur football, particularly in Ontario. Absolutely. You saw Ashton Watson with that first touchdown. Leo, they're both members of that St. Andrews team. They've got four players here uh, as well this afternoon. This time, the handoff. Joe Murphy breaks a tackle and gets close to first down yardage. Joe Murphy from Vernon High School with a pickup of four yards. And Joe Murphy with a, a coach who's pretty familiar to both of us. Yeah. Angus Reed, who recently moved up to Vernon a couple of years ago after spending his post-football career or post-football time in the Lower Mainland. And, yeah, he got the coaching bug. Joe Murphy shows up at Angus Reed's doorstep at 6 o'clock every morning. Angus has a garage gym set up. And the two of them work out along with a couple of other Vernon players. So certainly work ethic, not a problem. And this was just his first year of playing football. Yeah, very impressive young man. He has definitely been influenced by his coach. We'll talk a little bit more about that as the game goes on. Leo drops back the pass, has somebody open over the middle. Shuchuk again, breaks a tackle. This guy's hard to catch when he's in the open field, brought down close to the 15-yard line. Nick Shuchuk making an early impact. I want you to take a look here at the patience of the quarterback, Anthony Leo, as he watches his receiver, Shuchuk, crossing the field. But instead of throwing him the ball right now, he's going to wait just briefly to let him get into an open window, let him clear those defenders. There it is. Drops it in, perfect timing. Nice chemistry between a couple guys that have really only had a couple of days to work together up to this point. 35-yard game, or gain, Jaheim Lindo from Holy Trinity High School, another Edmonton kid that makes the tackle there. And, you know, Shuchuk is in the midst of all of these rival receivers because Shuchuk plays at Salisbury, and there's five receivers here, as we mentioned, from Harry Ainley, including uh, three of them on this year, two of them on this team. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, the, he says, he goes, look, we're all boys. We still spend a lot of time. We do a lot of the same off-season training together. We like each other. We get along well. <laughs> but uh, he's the guy from Salisbury amidst all the Ainley. Well, Ainley, the provincial champions. If you can't beat them, join them, right? Well, they lost, though, in the league final to Ainley before they, lost, before they beat them in the provincial championship game. This time, another completion to Shuchuk. And again, no surprise to see. Shuchuk targeted early and often in this ball game. That's a game of six, second down and four. And we talked a little bit about the football acumen as we see Coach Ch Sanchez looking very serious, very intense on that sideline. There's this Chez smile. He heard you. <laughs> He's this, got that headset working. His beard not as gray as Maddie's. <laughs> well, you know, Maddie's had a couple of years to live with that loss, I think, that turned him gray. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is Chez's first go around. Yeah, no doubt. Meanwhile, Joe Murphy again with the tough inside carry, close to a first down. So I asked Joe Murphy, Team Sanchez running back the other day, who his favorite running back was. He tells me, Marcus Dupree. Wow, he we went old school. I said, how, how on earth would you hear about Marcus Dupree, former Oklahoma and USFL star in the 80s? He said, 
Coach Reed yeah. introduced me. He's sending me YouTube videos all the time of old school running backs. Well, Marcus Dupree's high school film was pretty impressive. That was good enough for a first down. This time, Leo takes off and into the end zone for the touchdown. Anthony Leo with the touchdown ties this game at six. A bread and butter for the St. Andrews Saints star pivot. Loves a lot of run pass option type stuff. Pulls it, there you see the end crashing down. So he's gonna pull it and get himself around the end. Boy, there Take was, advantage there of was no speed. crash down there. He <laughs> wanted to keep the football. You think he was predetermined He wanted on that to one? keep the football and score. <laughs> hey, Barker, you gotta kick someone out. I'm not, I'm not even hyped because that's what I expect from you. That's what I expect from you. Lucas Scott. Lucas Scott on to attempt the point after touchdown to try to give the white team a lead. Kick is up. And it's good. White with the 7 6 lead. Sanchez tells his quarterback he's not hyped. Well, no. He's hyped. Well, Team Sanchez, after giving up an opening six to Team Dunnigan, responds, led by this 35-yard pass and run. Anthony Leo to Nick Shuchuk. The two connect again. And then it's Leo on a play where Farhan Lolji thinks the ball should have gone to the running back. No, no, no. When you're an athlete, and the, the read should have gone to the running back. But when you're an athlete that's that yeah, he good, knew. He, knew he knew he could outrun that end. Seven plays, 78 yards, 445 on that drive. And now Penichev is sacked. McMahon with the sack and the celebration. Yeah, Nathan McMahon. Out of Lord Tweedsmere. He's going to come off the edge. You know, and... Nathan McMahon told me yesterday he's not just competing out there against the opposing offensive tackles, Team Dunnigan offensive tackles. He is always competing against his older brother, Cody. Cody, who was one of the top D linemen in this prospect game in 2019. Now, of course, a member of the University of Calgary Dinos. Second and very long for Nick Panachev, who rolls to his right. He's got a completion, but not much of the play. Owen Hurley from Harry Ainley with the reception, but uh, they needed about 19 to go. Four is not going to do it. The red team is going to punt. Again, Hurley, one of the many receivers in this ball game out of Harry Ainley. And, What's that? You know, what the corner do? You talking about the first yeah, play? Yeah, the second one. Oh. What did the corner do? Yeah. Jump down, right? Yeah. 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 So what you do? Throw in there. That's offensive coordinator Tom Dennison, former Queens University star quarterback, spent a little bit of time with the Calgary Stampeders, where he was coached by one Matt Dunnigan. And those two teaming up again here. In this CanadaFootballChat.com prospect game. Got Nick Dawkins back to punt for the red team. Yeah, it looks like they might not have had enough people on the field as a, another member of the red team comes in late. That's poor coaching. <laughs> Is Maddie going to be reading people the riot act down there? Oh, yeah. Uh, not so much, fellas. <laughs> yeah. It's like. Uh, Hey, two days of practice, they're looking pretty good, Matty. Yeah, I mean, you expect that. You know, these kids are 15, 16, 17. They've done pretty, pretty amazing stuff over the last couple of days. Docking with the punt, or could do do with the return. There you go. Nice open field tackle. When we return, the Dunnigan crew tries to get back in front as we return to Ottawa. Welcome back to Ottawa. This game means a lot to so many players around the country, none more so than Antoine Delorier. Look at this guy. You'd think he was a graduating senior, maybe a collegiate player. He's actually in the 10th grade, and he's playing with a bit of an injury with more. Here's Matthew. Yeah, there's nothing like this game, Farhan, to build the legends of the players to come. And Antoine Delorier earlier this week dislocated the thumb on his left hand. He went to the hospital. They said it. They didn't set it properly. 
and they had to do it again. And his coaches said, listen, th this kid has so much potential. His testing numbers are through the roof. And we told him, you can pump the brakes. You don't have to play. And his simple answer was, no, I'm good. Oh, what it's like to be young, boys. <laughs> yeah, Delorier, true linebacker. Meanwhile, uh, Jeremiah Washington checks into the game at running back for the white team. Pass over the middle. Some early contact on the play. Flags are out. Likely to be pass interference right here. Anthony Leo with the pass. And Jalen McDonald, his intended target. What the? Pass interference on the defense. 15 yard penalty. First down. Jalen McDonald, who you'll see line up as the number three receiver in the slot from Vincent Massey High School in Winnipeg. Jalen told me yesterday he spent a little bit of time training with Andrew Harris and DJ Lalama in Winnipeg, prepping both for his high school career and for the opportunity he's presented with here today. Raphael Dunn with the pass interference on the play. That puts the ball across midfield, Anthony Leo. Hands off, oh, we thought he was gonna hand off to Jeremiah Washington, instead he dumps the ball to the flat. And that is Micah Barker from Robert Bateman Secondary in Abbotsford with the reception, good for a first down. Well, you see, once again, Leo playing to his strength. You see a little play action look to Jeremiah Washington in the backfield. Off that handoff, he's gonna pull it, get around the edge. Beats contained, dumps it off to Barker, Barker who plays running back for his Bateman High School team, but operating as an H-back here. Said he's enjoying it, a little more banging, a little, little bit more blocking, maybe not getting the ball quite as often, but getting the job done very effectively. Leo with the quarterback draw, makes one man miss, gets close to the 10 yard line, a nice pickup on first down for the athletic St. Andrews quarterback. And here we'll take a look. But Anthony Leo at field level will drop back, sees an opening, and away he goes to move the sticks for Team Sanchez. Anthony Leo actually spent last season at Woodbury Prep School in Virginia, and midway through the season, the team had some injuries at the receiver position, so they moved him to receiver after he played the first four games as quarterback, and definitely when he wanted to come back, he wanted to make sure that Dad kept him at quarterback and nothing else. Yeah, no question about that. Leo drops back to pass. Gets flushed to his right. Has a receiver in the end zone. It's Barker. Can't hang on. That pass incomplete. The intended receiver, number 35. But Leo <laughs> running and throwing well, keeping his eyes downfield. He's very comfortable on the move. Yeah, and here he's got to buy time. You're going to see Barker, who lines up at that H-back spot, essentially a tight end fullback just off the tackle. He goes flat and then turns this up into a wheel. So Leo has to buy a little bit of time. Very nearly connecting with the big man in the end zone. Second down at the 11-yard line. Leo drops back to pass. Has a receiver, but a good defensive play to break that one up. He had the corner, didn't it? Yeah, nice timing there. Jaden Trudeau with a play that his coach would be proud of. Well, what the other team's coach would be proud of. <laughs> That's right, Jaden is flipped over. Looking at, uh, looking on the outside, he's the corner. Coming off, making a nice break on the football as you see him eyeing up the backfield to break up that one intended for Tavia and Dean Morton. Nick Scott on to attempt the short field goal here. And we've got some early movement. Looks like offside on the red team. A Dunnigan team exceptionally aggressive as you'd expect. <laughs> offside on the defense. Five yard penalty, it remains third down. Not enough to get greedy here and go for it. Scott made his PAT earlier. Ah, they are getting greedy. A little change of personnel here. There you go, Leo comes back into the game. Team Dunnigan isn't the only team being aggressive here. 
Well, clear, clearly Davis has seen the analytics. Well, you know, the one thing, we, we mentioned off the top some of the rules in this game. They are still playing with the hash marks that are 17 yards apart yes. at this level of football. So it becomes a tougher kick from in that close. So that may factor into the decision as well. Leo comes back into the game. Washington in behind him. Leo looks to his left, has a receiver, Shuchuk has a touchdown, diving catch by Shuchuk. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Dare I say highlight of the night? Wow, already. Beautifully thrown ball there from Anthony Leo, demonstrating that it's not just about the legs for the St. Andrews quarterback. And Nick Shuchuk continues to impress as he goes and gets this one. It doesn't take much for that kid to get separation, but you know, you watch even when he catches the short passes, everything's out in front. He knows how to play the game. Yes, sir. That's just the start, guys. That's just the start, baby. <laughs> Oh, well, remember back in 2019, one of the big scoring stars of this game, Sony Bermudez Chavez. Another Alberta Edmonton area receiver, Harry Ainley guy, in fact, now at the University of Alberta. And Chris Morris's program had a couple of touchdowns in that game. Just look at the concentration. Never took his eyes off the ball at any point in that route. Shuchuk already with four catches in this game. Yeah, well-placed ball where only the receiver could go get it, and Shuchuk went and got it. Shuchuk with 1,185 yards and 18 touchdowns in nine games last season. That's in not nine games. Not bad production. Two touchdowns per <laughs> game. 130 yards per Justin, game. Justin, inside line. Tell, tell inside yeah, stick line, that Justin. Just go. Maddie's team on offense now trailing by eight. This is the final play of the quarter, should be. And do we have an interception? No, no close, no, no, but no, incomplete. No. That pass falls incomplete. Harry Vardy in at quarterback for the red team. So he'll likely get the bulk of the second quarter and he will get it back after that one falls just incomplete. An entertaining first quarter. Sanchez team with a 14 to 6 lead over Matt Dunnigan's here in Ottawa. Now here we see the numbers after one quarter in the CanadaFootballChat.com prospect game. Pretty good passing numbers. You see so far for Team Sanchez airing it out. We expected, you know, Matt Dunnigan with his over 700 yard single game CFL record to be airing it out, but uh, Team Chez has got it going pretty good here. Yeah, absolutely. And Nick Shuchuk, he's already had four receptions for 71 yards in this game, and we knew that this guy was going to be a, a big time playmaker. And then you've also had Ashton Watson for Matt Dunnigan's team running the ball really effectively in that opening drive behind some big holes by the O line. Yeah, they set the tone out of the gate, and I thought they did a terrific job running behind that that big offensive line as you mentioned we may look to see a little bit more of that here early in the second quarter from team dunnigan get that ground game going again yeah i don't know i think matt saw that ground game and said no no forget this i gotta throw the football owen hurley with the reception to open the second quarter harry vardy with the pass a 14-yard gain well, starting to get things going. Here we see the outstanding Team Sanchez linebacker, Antoine Delorier from Collège Laval. Demonstrating his range. Yeah, and I don't think the thumb is slowing him down at all. <laughs> Not a chance. Vardy with the handoff. Paul Condon from Airdrie, Alberta with the carry. Harry Vardy at the Brampton Showcase put up a 37-inch vertical. Pretty good athleticism for the kid from Port Hope. Yeah, that was uh, the, the top vertical jump. They consider this guy one of the top athletes in this football game. He's looking to move down to play, actually, prep school ball, St. Thomas More in Connecticut next season. 
Vardy with the throw. Maybe a bit of confusion between him and his receiver as it sails incomplete and brings up third and long. You're at midfield. Are you going to get aggressive? No. Coach Dunnigan's team punting? Yeah, he thought about it. Nick Dawkin on to punt. Long snapper is Josh Kibbe from Ottawa, the lone player here from Ottawa in this game. This guy spends two hours a day long snapping. Spends two hours a day practicing. That is dedication. Yeah, it certainly is. Mentioned Kibbe as the lone Ottawa guy, but doesn't actually play his high school ball here in Ottawa. He attends Royal Imperial College in St. Catharines, Ontario. Or a Kadudu on the return, breaks a couple of tackles, finds some room down the right sideline, and he gets across the 50 yard line. Good opening field position when Sanchez's team gets the ball back. Well, what, do you, what do you think about that special teams play, Coach Chez? That is beautiful. Hey, Tayshaun, there you go. Great job. I love that. You told Tayshaun catch it in the air, and then he can do what he does. Hey, there you go, baby. That's it. That's it. Hey, all they got to do is listen to Coach Chez. I think that's the Tayshaun. message to take away from this. Hey. Hey. hey, you just gained our offense 25 yards by catching the ball. We're down a starter, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, the other guy is a, a, a pretty good discrepancy and yes. ability. So we're going to have to lean on those guys just sling it a little bit and to move with their legs. Yeah, 100%. Jeremiah Washington with his first carry of the game gets a first down over 10 yards running between the tackles. And if you've heard the name before, I know Washington's a common name. That is the son of Ticat defensive coordinator Mark Washington who had a great CFO career. Yeah, and I had a chance to talk with Jeremiah a little bit yesterday and shared with him the story of being a couple months ago at the Canadian Football League Combine, and I was out on the field. I got a text from Lee Barrett as they were conducting some of the tryouts for this game. And the text said, Jeremiah Washington, son of Mark, will be a very good prospect for the game. Standing a few feet away from me was his dad, who I went and immediately told, I hear you're no longer the best football player in your family. Mark responded with a simple, it hasn't been in doubt for a while. Yeah, I asked him about that, and he said, look, he is well past being just Mark's son. Meanwhile, Matthew Teal with the play action fake to Washington, and nice throw going to his left, but uh, an equally impressive play by the defender. Yeah, here you'll see the range. Receiver Guy Bourne working towards the corner. We saw this matchup down near the end zone. A little earlier in the ball game is Jaden Trudeau. Jaden Trudeau primarily, primarily receiver in this game, but also getting some time in the secondary. Teal drops back on second and 10, makes the completion. That time it's Taven Guy Osborne, sorry, T Taven Guy Bourne. That's gonna be close to first down yardage. Maybe a couple yards to go, but do you get aggressive in a game like this? Of course you do. <laughs> How many yards we really good a game with this wind in our face, Martin? Yeah. Is the wind that bad? I think, I think Chess just wants to go for it. Yeah, no question. That's Matthew Teal, who was a late replacement to the game coming in from West Van. Nice, tall, six foot five. Certainly looks the part of a big time quarterback. Fine shoe check. That's what a smart quarterback does. Just get the ball to the fast guy. <laughs> good enough for a first down. Yeah, very reliable receiver, quick hitter. Nice execution there on the third down gamble. And again with Chuchuk, not a one-dimensional player. He can run any route. You'll see him on the, the jet sweep game and things like that for his team. He can bounce in and out of the backfield. He does a lot of things down the field, short, intermediate. And again, I love the way he has the hands out in front when he catches the ball all the time. This time the fake to Washington. Looks like he's going back on the screen, but then stays on the right side. A completion good for nine yards on the play. That time it's Gabe McEnroy. Yeah, I love this play from the quarterback, Matthew Teal, as well. As you can see, he's progressing through his reads, right? And you know quarter, quarterback play is always going to be a challenge in this situation with limited practice time, limited opportunity to get familiar with both playbook and receivers. But here you see him looked inside. Things were covered up. 
Check down to the outside receiver, McEnroy. Create the second and short situation. Gain of nine. Power back now into the game with Joe Murphy. Actually, Michael Barker, right? Brian Barker at running back. But he has stopped in the backfield to tackle for loss in the play. Oh, swarming defense there. That is Kai Yamoka with the tackle. He's playing linebacker. You're only allowed to blitz one. They certainly did it there. And that brings up a third and four. Kai Yamoka, whose father Brad is coaching in this game, his head coach at South Kamloops High School. And if you remember the name, former Winnipeg Blue Bomber, former UBC star. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brad a running back, but his son Kai over on the defensive side of the ball. Kai is playing at middle linebacker in this ball game. He has typically been a Sam or Nickel linebacker in his previous football experience. So he was telling me yesterday he finds it a little bit different playing the run a little bit more, being in coverage a little bit less, but looking right at home on that last play. So Sanchez didn't want to punt, but now he's good for the long field goal here. 36 yards from Lucas Scott. Scott with the kick. It is up, and it's good. Lucas Scott, two for two in field goals so far. Everything Sanchez is doing is working. <laughs> Fun afternoon here in Ottawa. It takes a lot to put an event like this together. Matthew Shinetti now has a chance to speak to the man who made it all happen. Lee Barrett has done such great work with CanadaFootballChat.com and bringing this prospect game back. Your team and you have done such a great job to bring it back. How much work has that taken to bring it back to this level? Well, we never stopped working. Even in the last two years, we announced rosters for the, the 2020 squad and the 2021 squad. So, I mean, as frustrating as it is for those kids and us, it was still a work in progress the whole time the last few years. 14 players in the 2019 game went to the NCAA and are on NCAA rosters. How influential has this game been to be a platform for Kansas State? Yeah, I mean, you can't replicate this competition anywhere in the country when all the best get together. So first of all, it gives those kids a great confidence that they can play in the best. And it gives an awareness, not only that they can play in the best, but it gives awareness for the scouts. We had many scouts call us north and south of the border about these kids. And, uh, you know, they came through and, and performed well at camps and performed well in this game. And now you see the fruits of their labor in the NCA. You've done such great work here, but what's the next level? How do you take this game to an even bigger platform? Yeah, I think we need to gain the momentum back that we had after that first year and then get more fans in the stands. We've got a plan for that. It was tough this year coming out of the situation we came out of. But I think uh, getting that awareness out there, empower the, the families that might have those greasy street agents that all sports have that uh, say they played in the CFL but they didn't. Once people see this and uh, know this is uh, what it is, we're going to get uh, the best kids and they're going to perform well and, and give themselves a, a great uh, service uh, showing off to all the scouts across the country and, and uh, North America. Really appreciate you and your work, Lee. Thanks for this. Thanks, Matt. You and I have had a chance to know Lee for a long time, and we know the, the tireless work that he does for amateur football and to make not just this game, but the, the national rankings that CFC puts together. Uh, you know, they, they pick an all-Canadian first and second team at a, you know, a different level. So just the exposure, profile, validation that CFC gives these players. Yeah, and this, I can tell you, I mean, I've known Lee for a long time, and this comes from a, a genuine passion for amateur football. I mean, this is a guy who, aside from his work at CanadaFootballChat.com, which he founded, has coached at various levels of football in this country, a couple of different university gigs at Acadia and McGill along the way, has coached with provincial teams and so on. So, you know, started the Clarkson Football North program, which has produced a, a number of terrific players. We talked about them on, on Canadian Football League draft night a few weeks ago with a couple of top 10 CFL picks, Terrell Richards and Deontay Knight coming out of that program so yeah I mean th this game as great as it is is really just the tip of the iceberg for the work of of Lee Barrett in the world of amateur football in this country great job Lee Dwayne and I are happy to do this game every year it's one of the highlights of our season meanwhile Dunnigan's red team's got it going on a couple of nice completions to Owen Hurley and quarterback Harry Vardy has this team knocking on the door this time the handoff Paul Condon with the carry on second and short Still well short of the first down. We'll see how aggressive Matt chooses to be here on third. Harry! Oh! Yeah, 
team done a good offense, as you said. Picking it up, trying to keep it going, right? Trying to get in a little bit of a groove, a little bit of a rhythm, and see if they can wear down the team Sanchez D. Going forward here on third and five, over the middle, intercepted. That is Tasman Smith Windsor with the interception off the deflection and gets it back out to the 30 yard line. Our first turnover of the game. Yeah, big pick on the deflected ball. You know, third down gamble. Some might say almost as good as a punt. Nonetheless, ball hawking. Team Sanchez. And welcome to Richardson Stadium in Kingston, Ontario. Looking end zone for Tucker. Touchdown! And a big hit. Here comes Queens. Go, Sai! We thank Queens for their support of this game, given all the free commercials that you're about to give Western. <laughs> Matthew Thiel gives it right back with the interception. Raphael Dunn had the pass interference earlier, gets it right back with a big time interception off the Thiel pass. Yeah, huge play there by Raphael Dunn. You see the, the size of him. This is a safety. About six foot three, six foot four. He's back there playing a little bit of center field. You know, and players who had various commitments academic and otherwise leading up to this game arrived at different times so Dunn is one who was a, a late arrival didn't really get any practice time prior to the game but you wouldn't know it from that fantastic play he actually loves playing chess it seems like he kind of baited Matthew <laughs> Teal he was playing chess right there while the rest of us play checkers yeah checkmate a 100 and, or sorry an 1147 rating on chess.com that's pretty good <laughs> Harry Vardy happy to get the ball back, play fake, steps up into the pocket, throws it into traffic. Yeah, tight window there for Vardy, who is under pressure from the team Chez D-line. Here's the interception earlier. Yeah, first pick of the game, keep an eye. Deep top right corner of your screen is Taz Smith Windsor from Carleton High School in Saskatchewan, you can guess what his favorite CFL team is. Stepping up to make a play on the deflected ball there. Israel Pitt forced the deflection. So a couple of good defensive plays there. Meanwhile, second and 10 now. Play action fake, pressure coming. Barty deep down the right sideline. Almost a completion or a kadoodoo down the right sideline there. We've seen him earlier in the kick return game. Yeah, I think that was actually Orkadudu's Harry Ainley teammate, Matthew Jonah, down the sideline. Little hand fighting going on there, I think distracting the receiver from being able to haul that one in. Yeah, you're right, my mistake, Jonah with the, uh, as the intended target there, and that brings up third and 10 now. Nick Dawkin back to punt for Team Dunnigan. Koru Dudu this time back on the punt return. Still on his feet. Looked like he'd gone down, but just managed to keep his balance. When we return, four minutes to go in the first half of the CFC Prospects game. Welcome back to Ottawa. This is the definition of a football lifer right here. <laughs> Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, I get a little bit nervous when I see Adam Rita and Matt Dunnigan teamed up together, having been on the, the losing side of the 1991 Grey Cup when it was Adam's offense with Matty pulling the trigger that beat my Calgary Stampeders. But, yeah, Adam continuing to be involved in coaching. Hey, Spends part of his year Get every year. on the other side of the field. Coaching in Europe, but also helping out running the offense for that Clarkson football north program in Mississauga that we mentioned producing so many terrific ball players. I will, ne I will never forget 1996 
Danny Barrett and I were coaching the receivers at the BC Provincial All-Star Game. And Adam Rita, who was coaching at the Lions at the time, was in charge. He put in 48 plays <laughs> with four days of practice. 48 plays. Keep it simple. Give the ball to Joe Murphy. 12 yard like game. We're playing on a smaller field. And, they're, and, and their holes are like just massive for some reason. I don't know what the hell's wrong. Come on, guys. Here we go. Well, if somebody's got to figure things out on offense, I've, I've got a lot of faith in those two guys. Dunnigan and Rita to get her done. No question. I still give Adam Rita credit for the read option. Like worldwide application, I'm giving Adam Rita full credit for why that play exists in football. Here is Joe Murphy again with the carry. Uh, there is no doubt that a lot of great offensive concepts have been developed in Canadian football and adapted elsewhere. Second and long here for the white team as they're trying to get back to within a touchdown before we get to halftime here. Just under three minutes to go in the first half. Matthew Teal at quarterback for Davis Sanchez's team white. Teal drops back, finds the crosser. This time it's Shuchuk. Catches the pass, which was behind him. Winds up with his sixth reception of the game and a first down. Less than three minutes to go. When we come back, we'll see if the white team can add to their lead here in Ottawa. A serious looking Davis Sanchez with his team up 11 points here. Uh, I, I don't know if he's looking serious or if the old man's back is just sore, so he's crouching down over there. <laughs> Davis, you're going to make it? Yeah, op option B, uh, very <laughs> astute uh, for you. Option B. I feel your pain, brother. I feel your pain. You went for a massage yesterday. <laughs> All part of the game day prep for Coach Chez. <laughs> Coach Chez's team with an 11-point lead. Jalen McDonald with the reception for Matthew Thiel. Breaks to the outside, gets close to the 20-yard line before being thrown out of bounds by Raphael Dunn. Matthew Thiel executing a pretty good drive here. And Jalen McDonald, one of the first guys who, who was pointed out to me yesterday. Pre-game out on the, uh, the practice field. And it was Adam Rita who took note and, you know, motioned to the kid in the green shoes, said, I like this kid. Now, when I talked to Jalen, I kind of warned him, you know, with that Winnipeg-Saskatchewan rivalry, you, you better explain to people that the green shoes are your Vincent Massey colors. Yeah. Yeah, this game in 2019 was dominated by Winnipeg players from Vincent Massey and St. Paul's. This time, Micah Barker breaking through some tackles. Well, Micah Barker, I guess Barker's a guy that Maybe not Micah, but you've got a little bit of history with the family. Well, yeah, apparently, because I called his coach uh, at Robert Bateman. David Mills does a great job over there. And I said, look, tell me some stories. He's like, his father, Aaron, wants me to tell you that you coached him at the Western Canadian All-Star Camp in the early 90s. So I coached his father. How old does that make me feel? <laughs> Don't think about it. Dad Aaron was an exceptional offensive lineman at UBC, part of their Vanier Cup team in 1997. Teal takes off to the right. Good enough for a first down here as he uses those long legs to eat up yardage before hitting the sideline. Yeah, good decision there by the tall pivot. You know, we knew Anthony Leo was a runner. Expected six foot six Teal maybe to be a little bit more of a pocket passer, but showing his versatility. And again, I like the decision making from a young quarterback. Instead of trying to force a ball here and show off his arm, Use the legs, pick up a first down, and keep the drive alive. First and goal now, right at the 10-yard line for Team White. Teal looking into the end zone, has a receiver, gets who? Shuchuk, touchdown number two. And this is a nice adjustment by Shuchuk, who was working towards the corner ball, a little bit underthrown, giving the DB a chance to make a play on it. But you'll see number four, Shuchuk, work back to the football to help out his quarterback. Nice adjustment here as the ball is in the air to get in front of the defender for his second major of the day. Eight receptions 
for 88 yards and two touchdowns in one half of play for Nick Shuchuk. Uh Yeah, early candidate for MVP, definitely. Yeah. And how about this? I'm wondering if the entire Harry Ainley receiving crew can match Nick Shuchuk <laughs> by the end of this game with his statistics. Yeah, he's got a pretty good head start going here so far. Nick Scott on for the PAT. He's already kicked two field goals and hit a PAT early in this game. This one might be lucky to make it. No, it didn't get all of it. Ah, it happens. What's the dude, right? Hey, nothing easy. Nothing easy, right? Everybody play with dip. And here we'll take a look. That shoe chuck going to work. Little stick to the post, break it out to the corner. Adjust to the football and pull it in. William Caron Cabrera in coverage and did a good job working his way back to the ball, but then Shuchuk took a couple steps forward and just was able to shield him. Yeah, Shuchuk just did, did a nice job again when it was in the air, as you said. Caron Cabrera had eyes on it, was looking to make a play on the ball, but Shuchuk just outfought him, working back to the towards the line of scrimmage to make a play. 149 remaining for Team Dunnigan as they trail 23-6. It's Vardy on the right, has a receiver in the middle of the field, but a good defensive play. Israel Pitt, we do have a flag deep in the secondary. Looked like the ball was there, but Pitt was even better. Israel Pitt from guess where? <laughs> Harry Ainley. Too many players on the defense. Ten yard penalty, first down. Oh, well, let's see who comes off. <laughs> guilty party but you know nonetheless Pitt a guy who usually plays linebacker actually at Harry Ainley but helping out moving back to that safety spot you know he said he usually likes to be closer to the line of scrimmage a little closer to the action stick his nose in there but look pretty good showing off his range and coverage on that one no matter how many players were on the field you're on the offense five yard penalty okay don't down. wait on it be aggressive man it's your meal ticket Receivers getting a little antsy. They know they've got some ground to make up here with 142 to go. That brings up first and 15. It's amazing that they can get any form of no huddle in at this point, and it seems like they've done that. Yeah, credit to all the coaches involved in this game. Obviously, we talk a lot about, about Maddie and Chez, but you know, the review sports and other amateur coaches who get involved to help out and do a terrific job getting the young men ready to play in this ball game. Charles Williams with the reception from Vardy there. Bring up about second and five here, right around midfield. Yeah, looking with about a minute and a half to go in this first half, Team Dunnigan looks, looking to close the deficit a little bit. And get, some break. and get some momentum going into the second half after they had that great opening drive to this game. Vardy looks to the right, has an open receiver. Blaze Cameron with the catch. We've been wanting to call his name a little bit more. I think that's just Blaze's second reception of the game or second target of the game. Seven yard gain gets him a first down. Yeah, demonstrating his size and strength, rising up above the defender to go get this football and move the sticks. And ball into Team Sanchez territory. First and ten, Vardy rolls to his left. Looking deep, oh, tries to oh. float it over the top. Owen Hurley, the intended target, he pulls it down. Using that height to his advantage. Six foot six, 180 pound target. 21 yard in the game, 21 yards on the completion. Well, we saw in the previous play, number eight, Blaze Cameron with the terrific catch. This time, even though it's a passing play, he's going to stay in and get involved in the pr protection scheme as they try to seal the edge. He does a nice job. Can't hook him, so he stays on his guy, makes sure he drives him out, giving the quarterback, Vardy, an opportunity to get outside of the pocket. Vardy rolling right this time, puts it up. And that time, Hurley did a good job making sure it wasn't intercepted. Yeah, contested catch, unable to come down with the... The grab, but as you said, staying with it to ensure that it wasn't going to end up going the other way. So it looked like the DB was very well positioned on this one. Shabanov in coverage there. Oh, no, no, no. 
Hardy now on second and 10, tries to get the edge, has a completion. Cameron with the catch, but a short gain on the play. That's not gonna be enough for a first down. Looks like Matt, uh, Matt Dunnigan and his crew have called timeout. They wanna think about this. You wanna get a touchdown here. You don't wanna settle for a field goal. Yeah, absolutely. Come on, Harry. Hey, you got water in? Come on, Harry. Again, finding some success. What's that? One of the guys we talked about off the top plays Cameron, getting a little bit more involved offensively. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Let's go. Let's have some fun with it. Nick, you lose? It's a helmet. It's a helmet. Here we go. Here we go. You're going into receiver. Who's our two week coming out? Who's coming out? Two week. Okay, you're, you're adding into the boundary. Let's go. Roger, double trouble. Okay, Roger, double trouble. Protect it up. Okay, double stock and go. Okay. Stay behind. Uh, who's our number? Uh, who's our number three? Okay. Okay. Boom! Come on, come on, come on. Watch the screen. Watch the screen. If it's not there, if the half sinks, take so off. So it looks like they're setting up okay. some sort of double pass yep. here. Roger, double trouble. Going into the bag of tricks. Nick Panachev coming into the game, so we're going to see two quarterbacks here. Come on. Oh no, Vardy's, Vardy, actually yeah, both quarterbacks are in the game. Nick Panachev and Harry Vardy are both in right now, so. And yeah. interestingly enough, Chez's group was talking about playing the double pass, or the double move, I should say. Well, they tried it. The defense was ready for it, and it yeah, turned into it. an incomplete pass on third down. Defense, defense. Did you hear that? Another double pass? That's a double pass. Oh, okay. Good job, baby. Good yeah, job. Yeah, the defense was calling it out, but I don't know how good a job they necessarily did of, of getting to, to Harry Vardy, but just unfortunately that first pass a little bit off the mark. Wait a minute. I think what's happened here is that Davis is able to hear Mike or is able to hear Matt talk. That had to be why he was so well prepared. <laughs> you be quiet. You be quiet, he was ready. Pretty fiery. 33 seconds to go. Matthew Teal at quarterback. Hands off here to Joe Murphy. Powers his way through for a short game. Kai Yamoka with the tackle on the play. Couple of Okanagan guys going head to head right there. On for Team Sanchez at this point. Dodging a bullet there to end the late in the first half. They just want to make sure in their own territory they take care of the football. Run out these final 20 seconds. Goose egg. Murphy again. Has a bit of space before being brought down. That was Nevin Brown, the first guy there. And that should get us to halftime here. Excellent game tackle by the defense. Only well, we one more shot on special teams for Team Dunnigan if they can spring a big return. Nick Scott back to kick, but the clock's running down. They could just take a knee here. We'll see if they actually kick the ball. Maddie's team calling a timeout here. They want to make sure they get a return. Where are you going? Or because they had too many on the field. And Sanchez sends his offense back out on the field, thinking with a second left we can just take a knee. Or maybe he'll surprise us, Dwayne. <laughs> I don't think he's going to surprise us. 23 to 6 lead for Team Chad Sanchez through the first 29 minutes and 59 seconds. No, 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 you're QAing somebody else. They just ran it. Looks like victory formation here. Matthew Teal steps back, takes a knee. 
And that's it. At halftime, we have got Team Sanchez with a 20 to 3 or 23 to 6 lead over Team Dunnigan. An entertaining first half, 29 points scored, big plays on both sides. The second half should be a lot of fun when we come back to Ottawa with the CFC Prospects game. Welcome back to TD Place. David Sanchez's team is up 23 to 6 over Matt Dunningan's team. And it's easy to forget the credentials of both coaches. We see their personalities on the CFL and TSN panel, but remember this, Matt Dunnigan threw nearly 44,000 yards and won great cups during his playing career. And Davis Sanchez also won great cups and was the first Canadian to start at corner in the NFL. But yesterday, these coaches, these CFL greats, got to share their personalities and their knowledge with Canada's top prospects. You know you're big when you got three numbers on your, on your jersey. <laughs> We got a guy out here, he's got three numbers on his jersey. Straight across. Uh, there he is, 254. Two, five, Look at him. Can he throw the ball from there to here? Like, when, if, you're, if you're here, can you easily get there if he's throwing from there? So then be here. It's not, we're not playing one on one, right? I know you can make that throw, but make it consistently yeah. is what we're looking for. Everybody talks about shoulders is hips, right? Yeah. Best way to defend defend a receiver, just play their hands. Especially in the middle of the field. If you're the sideline to help you, maybe. In the middle of the field, it's very rare I'm going to be able to turn around and play the ball in the air. I want to see you just being violent. And often, they're not going to call. Referees aren't going to call. If you're not, look like you're panicking. If you're comfortable like this, go. They're not going to, they're not going to, sorry about that. They're not going to call it. You sell it, you know, you sell it with your eyes and, and even here, and then you can, you know, and then boom, right there. You don't want to lift it. You don't want to do this. Yeah. Nice. None of y'all were freaking alive when I was playing, right? So I don't expect y'all to know who the hell I am or what I did. But... All right. Go. You good with this one? Hey, right. get one and take it wherever you go. Football's in your hand, stand around with it like this. You know who did this? I picked this up from Damon Allen. You know that name? Yeah. It's pretty good. I played 23 years in the CFL. He's an ex-teammate of mine, and we're on the same team now with Bet Regal, that's a different story. Guys, call it! Guys, call it! He's in trail, he's in trail. Oh, you're not in trail, you're ahead of him. Think depth, space, make, make him complete throws in tight windows. Back up a bit. Give some space, make them complete it in front of you, or else you can help on the corner. You can help on the sand. You can help on their, your cornerback. It just allows you to do more. You gotta be able to step away from that, right? Bam! Step in a hole and kick it out. You gotta be, you gotta be, you gotta be able to do them both, right? And 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 do it and do it like it's like like you're sleeping, you know. It's a good ball. It's a good ball. Put it after. Don't hesitate about showcasing your guys' abilities, okay? Everything should be mental out here right now, and then tomorrow's all and we lay it on the line, right? That's what we do. That's why you're here. Masks, food, and feet up, okay, guys? Team Dunnigan on three. One, two, three! Team Dunnigan! Definitely weather for some geese, but the football competition is red hot. Farhan and Dwayne will try to break down how Matt Dunnigan's team can get back in the second half. Right, there you see the halftime stats. This battle between Team, Dun team Dunnigan and Team Sanchez. Team Dunnigan closing the gap in terms of yardage, but still struggling a little bit on the scoreboard. Time and possession, slight edge for Team Sanchez so far in this ballgame. A couple of turnovers maybe looming large for uh, for Team Dunnigan in this ballgame. Yeah, and there's been turnovers on both sides, just the one interceptions each way. But, you know, when you look at it overall, it's been a well-played game. We've seen very yeah. few penalties. Um, just when you get two days of practice, you expect things to be a little more sloppy. The weather's cooperated, but overall, I think the quality of play has been good. Now, from Coach Dunnigan's perspective, you had that incredible drive to start the mm -hmm. game, handing the ball off to Ashton Watson. You get the touchdown out of it behind that big offensive line. 
but then the quarterback in him comes out. <laughs> yeah, they've been sl slinging the ball a lot out there, but here you're going to see as we look at some first half, half highlights. This is from the opening series. Ashton Watson went to work. I think he had three carries on that opening drive, including the long touchdown run. Not a lot of looks for him after that. And then it was the team white quarterbacks, Anthony Leo and Matthew Teal, finding Nick Shuchuk a little bit. Leo and Shuchuk combining for a couple of first quarter touchdowns, one on the pass, one on the run from Leo you saw a little bit earlier, and then it was Teal throwing that one on the corner route to Shuchuk for his second major of the ball game. Shuchuk, obviously a guy who's standing out so far here. Yeah, no question, an early candidate for MVP. And how difficult is that to do? Number one, you've got this much talent, so there's only so many balls to go around. But I remember in 2019, there was a receiver named Nolan Ulm, who's now at Eastern Washington University, doing very well, incredibly talented player. But sometimes in this setting, it's tough to stand out despite expectations. Does that make it even more impressive what Shuchuk's been able to do? Eight catches for 88 yards and two touchdowns in a half. Yeah, it really is because it's, as a receiver, obviously it's a position in which, yes, you can control whether you get open or not, but you don't necessarily control whether you get the ball or how well throw the thrown the ball is and things like that. And we talked about the, the two days of practice in the lead up to this game. Very li limited opportunity for quarterbacks and receivers to build that much of a rapport for one guy to get so many touches. But obviously, Shuchuk has been that good through the couple of practices that I think everybody noticed, including the quarterbacks who have recognized that this is a guy who we can rely on to get open. Yeah, no question. If you're a new quarterback and you're trying to figure it out, I think the easy answer has been get the ball to number four in white. 23-6 the score at halftime. Dunnigan trying to win his first in this concept. Welcome back to Ottawa for the second half of the CFC Prospects game. It is Team Sanchez with a 23-6 lead over Team Dunnigan. Team Dunnigan's team started out very well on that first drive. We'll see if they get back to it. Nick Shuchuk from Salisbury High School certainly has set this game on fire in the first half. Ashton Watson, we asked earlier maybe why he didn't get any touches after that first drive, but there is the look of a frustrated young man who is limping a bit. Yeah, we see him hobbling. Watson came out of the gates in outstanding fashion. He was the key guy on the opening offensive drive for Team Dunnigan, had three carries, including a, a long touchdown run to open the scoring on the day, but obviously limited by injury. Since then, we'll get a little bit more on that from our man, Matthew Shinetti. Yeah, Forty, uh, hearing from Coach Dunnigan that uh, Watson has a torn ligament in his foot, in his big toe. The competition is fierce. Uh, the injuries, though, when they happen here, aren't great, especially when you're trying to show off your skill. But obviously, Coach Dunnigan wanted to protect his players as well, guys. Yeah, no tough question news. about that. Yeah, very tough news, obviously, for for the team in this ball game, but for a, a young man as well. Work, looking to work hard through the, the summer season for his uh, getting prepared for the high school season, et cetera. And we hope that this doesn't limit him too much or for too long. Here's a look at Nick Shuchuk, and we've talked about him in the first half. Here's one of many big plays for the young man. Yeah, his quarterback, Anthony Leo, lays it out there. Shuchuk works to the corner. Well thrown ball. Nice extension to go get that one. The young receiver from Salisbury High School, Sherwood Park, Alberta living up to his advanced billing in this ballgame. Yeah, and we've talked a lot about these Alberta receivers, primarily the Harry Ainley guys, because there's so many of them. We've mentioned there's eight Harry Ainley players here, including five receivers, and guys that have certainly played on both sides of the ball. And this is a rivalry, right? So during the regular season, Salisbury beat Harry Ainley for the league championship. But then in the playoffs, in the provincial semifinals, it was Ainley getting the last laugh, and Shuchuk certainly making a statement here. Yeah, he certainly is. He's been uh, the most noticeable player on the field thus far. And, you know, I think that is just continuing what he did during the week of practice as well. So, yeah, and when you hey, look guys, at what this young man right did. Now. You know, hey, hey, everybody hear me? You know what they say, right? At the beginning of the second half, the score is 0 0, right? Zero. No, it ain't 0 0. It's 23 6. We're kicking their ass. Let's do it again in the second half. Yeah. Kick it! Yeah. Kick it! 
That's on three. One, two, three. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Love it. It's a family show that works. Hey, Team Chaz all fired up. Ready to go, but you know there's going to be pushback go. from Team Dunnigan. Yeah, no okay. question. It's an opportunity to showcase you know, your skills. That's what we want to do. It's another 30 minutes, okay? Let's go. Can you make much in the way of adjustments in a game like this? Here we go. Uh, you're limited because there are only so many things that the teams are allowed to do. Obviously, short week of practice, limited prep time. So the teams are limited in terms of how much they're really able to do formation-wise, motion-wise, blitz package, etc. Now here's a smart thing Sanchez and his group can do. Get the ball to Jeremiah Washington. He had one touch in the first half, which was a 10-yard run. Uh, picks it up again with a 12-yard run to start the second half right here. And Jeremiah Washington is a young man who comes from one of the top high school programs in the province of Ontario, St. Thomas More. Catholic Secondary School in Hamilton, Ontario. No, no, no. I'm claiming him as a BC kid because he grew up on fields <laughs> out in British <laughs> Columbia. I'm sorry, he's one of mine. <laughs> ready, ready. All right, this time the play fake. Leo checks and gets to his left. This time it is Gabe McEnroy with the reception. If you're going to fake that's, to Jeremiah that's Washington, tackle. that's a good person beat to fake to. He's going to get the defense thing. Yeah, he's definitely going to draw some attention, as you see McEnroy, by the way, representing New Brunswick in this ball game. Kenneth Cassis Valley High School. Now I know the Atlantic conference coaches are drooling. He suggested he might like to go away for school, maybe eyeing a couple of OUA options. Guess who? Nick Shuchuk with his first catch of the second half, ninth on the night. 13 yards on the play. And we'll take a look at Shuchuk going to work again here. Defense dropping into zone coverage. He just finds that soft spot and sits down. And when you've got four, five, eight speed, which he has shown at various combines, you are going to make sure you get over the top and try not to get beat deep. And that one, by the way, puts Shuchuk over 100 receiving yards on the day. Leo pulls the ball down, picks up six yards on the play. Something he's very comfortable doing. Yeah, yeah, terrific dual threat quarterback. He's done a nice job showing off the full range of his skills in this ball game. Well, when we saw the read option for the touchdown earlier, not so much read, just run for the touchdown, as I said early on. But I'm interested to see how St. Andrews does this year. Coach Marcello Leo has decided they're going to play four U.S. games this year uh, against really strong opponents. We know what Football North does. Jeremiah Washington with the carry right here as he bounces to the left when he had no hole to start. Still manages to pick up a yard or two on the play. But just that concept of being aggressive with your scheduling mm -hmm. and giving these kids the opportunity to play against top competition. Yeah, and I think this has been a, a big trend. And a game like this is, is part of it. That I think so often in, in this country, the football competition sometimes on a team level, but even more so on an individual level for the top players can be so spread out. But I think it's important when you, you have a strong team to go and find the other strong teams to play against. You know, don't just be satisfied with being the, the champions in your, your small region. Let's get out and find that competition and help build your program, help develop your players. And same thing for the top players. And I talked to a number of guys involved in this game about about it. Some of the guys come from smaller areas where there's not concentrated competition as we have a fake field goal or maybe the kicker Scott not comfortable with the hold. Sure looked like a fake. Cole Ricken with the tackle on the play saving the first down because it, it looked like the hold was there. He got the ball down and then just yeah. decided to be aggressive. He can't put much in the way of a fake in a game like this yeah. but hey Anthony Leo trying to be creative trying to extend the lead for Sanchez team when we come back to Ottawa.
And as we take a look back, keep an eye on the, the ball as the holder, Anthony Leo, looks to put it down. That one's just off the tee, so he shows great football acumen here. And this is a young man who is a coach's son. Great reaction to recognize this becomes a fire situation. We're not going to be able to get the kickoff cleanly. Just pulls it and tries to turn it into a positive play. Good reaction from Team Dunnigan, though. Allows them to take over the ball just inside their own 35. This time looking for Owen Hurley. Harry Vardy at quarterback to open the half for Team Dunnigan. Yeah, just off the mark that time. So this will be a second and 10 situation for Maddie's Red Squad. And as we mentioned, they're a bit short handed here with Ashton Watson on the sideline. They're going to rely a bit more on the pass game. That inside the receiver almost intercepted Tegan Sattler. Eventually with the knockdown, but a bit of a break there for Team Red as they will now punt. Yeah, Sattler from Drumheller Valley. High school in Southern Alberta. Dinosaur country. BB manages to get a hand on that ball. Good effort there, Nick Dawkin on to punt. Yeah. Dawkin from Sherwood Park. Yeah, so Dawkin actually plays at Harry Ainley, but doesn't attend that school. His school doesn't have a football team, so he's able to participate at Ainley. Says he, though he's a kicker, he loves sitting in on Brock Ralph's offensive meetings, just learning the game. Or Kududu back there with the punt return, manages to beat the first tackler, brought down in the play close to midfield. When we come back, we'll hear from Team Sanchez and their head coach. The third quarter is brought to you by CFC Insider, Canada's only online resource for football prospect rankings and analysis. You know, if they had a coach of the year in the CFC rankings, this guy might get it. His team's looking pretty good right now, Davis. I appreciate it. I don't want my general manager uh, credentials to be bashed after not using Jeremiah Washington in the first half, guys. Let's be totally clear. Uh, my offensive coordinator, Coach Flax, told me he had him, he was using him on offense, so I couldn't have him on defense. And then he touched the ball once or twice only on offense. So good to see them using Jeremiah in the second half because he's one of my best corners as well. Let's just clear that up. <laughs> well, like, you're in charge, Chaz. You, you can make these things happen. You don't need permission. That's what comes with being a head coach. Yeah, that's a good point. That's probably something I need to learn. Bro. That's something I need to learn. But I'm, I'm a work in progress in many different ways, as you know. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, the, the Queens Gales had an undefeated regular season this year. You've got Tom Flaxman over there, their offensive coordinator. I think you're pretty wise to listen to Coach Flax. Well, on, on top of that, guys, you know that Jeremiah is missing the South Regional Track and Field Championships today to play in this game, which means he can't go to provincials. So you might want to get your money's worth because he's, you know, he's missing something big here. We got, we got a lot of talent. The boys are looking good. Uh, what, what a day to be out here. Amen to that, Chess. Blitz on the play. Jadim Lindo misses initially, but uh, Aiden Dion there to clean it up. There's a sack for Team Dunnigan. Uh, Aiden Dion from that D line spot. This guy's a former soccer player. You know, and we, we joked a little bit yesterday because I went through the same thing as a kid as a rep soccer player. Keep an eye on Dion, 94, coming off the left edge of your screen. Gets the hands working. You can see a guy who's a defensive lineman, not enough contact in soccer. Kind of outgrew it. You know, I went through the same thing myself, so we had a good chat about that yesterday. And he looks like he has found a home on the football field. Anthony Leo with a dart to Nick Shuchuk between three defenders, ball right on the money. And of course, Shuchuk makes the catch. And Anthony Leo, you know, a guy that a lot of people would probably label as a running quarterback, right? An RPO guy, run pass option. But doing a nice job here from the pocket. His offensive line gives, gives him nice protection. Window opens up. Nice connection there with Shuchuk as those two have great chemistry. They might want to be a package deal when, the, uh, <laughs> eh, for the recruiters. Well. Uh, University of Waterloo, led by Chris Bertoya, among the teams quite interested in Leo. And when you look at what Trey Ford did as an athletic quarterback in that program, 
Leo's not bad. Big time defensive play right there by Nevin Brown. Sorry, Jeremiah, we've been giving you love, but <laughs> Brown doesn't want to love you right there. Yeah, Nevin Brown considered one of the top players coming into this game shows you exactly why. From his linebacker spot, you're going to see Brown storm his way into the backfield with ill will. Block comes a little bit late, trying to get to him. He just beats, beats the blocker to the spot to stop Washington for a loss. Yeah, tough for Micah Brown there, not knowing a blitz is coming. Second and long, they converted the last time. Can they do it again? Leo looks inside. This time leaves it inside, and it is broken up by Asun Ducharme. And nice reaction to the football there by Ducharme. Keep an eye here. Once again, Nevin Brown from Dakota High School in Winnipeg. He's coming on the blitz. They do a nice job picking things up in the middle, but still a little pressure off the edge on the quarterback, Leo. Throws that ball under duress. Josiah Halliburton, the intended target. Plus yarders. Now, we saw what happened the last time on the field goal attempt by Lucas Scott. This time from outside 41 yards. His, his season long last year was 39 yards, he was telling me. Short snap, this time Scott gets it on the tee. Will it get there? Just short. William Caron Cabrera with the return. They're saying he was down, loses the ball. Good Josiah call. Washington, or Jeremiah Washington came up with it, but they're gonna say the play was dead right there. No points so far midway through the third quarter. We'll see if Team Dunnigan can change that when we return. Still plenty of time to go midway through the third quarter. Team Dunnigan trying to get back on the board after that impressive opening drive. Matt? Watch, watch Harry's eyes. Watch his eyes. And watch if he takes this free right to him every time. Watch. Matt, what does this team need to do to get some offense going and get back into this one, my friend? Well, we need to get our quarterback to read it out, and and um, he's he's a little nervous now. The four completions he had in the first half, three of them were bust on his part, thrown into traffic. So he's a little nervous trying to get him settled down. That's all. Harry Vardy right here, throws over the middle. This time intercepted. Tasman Smith-Windsor. He could go the distance. Smith-Windsor into the end zone for the what touchdown. He just got right off the back. It was open in the flat. just got right off it. What? Well, Smith Windsor with his second pick of the ball game. And you know, Davis Sanchez, a former CFL League leader in interceptions in his playing days, has got to be pleased to see that. And Matt talked about it. There was a blitz on the play that obviously affected Vardy, overthrows his receiver, and Smith Windsor right there doesn't make any mistake, takes it back to the house. Yeah. From Carleton High School, in Waskizu Lake, Saskatchewan. Maybe. Yes. Uh, no question, he is a Riders fan. Tells me that one of his earliest memories as a Riders fan is that 2013 Grey Cup victory. Grey Cup 101. Right. That half carries him right there, stick it on him, right? Uh, just going to settle you down, okay? Scott with the kick, it's up. It's no good, no, but we do have a couple of penalty flags in the play. Team Sanchez, 29. Team Dillon gets six. Huh? Seven out of six remaining. Okay. When they're oh, thrown from there, it's usually a too many men on the field or something along those lines. How'd you get that? Was it like a perfect throw? Yeah, you threw it right to me. You love that. He threw it right to me if you're a defender. How many, how many yards? Either way, you're going to reach Either way, you're going to reach Okay, kick it again. Yeah, yeah. Kick it again either way. Do you want to kick from the 15 and, and start the 40 and have them start the 40? Or do you want to kick from the 25? No, 15, 15. 15. Right. Yeah. Yeah, 15. Thank you. Yeah. Back on the field. Let's go. So they had the Count choice to apply it on the kickoff or take it right there from the PAT. They're going to give young Scott a chance again to get this one right. Convert at the 15 yard line. And we'll take a look at this interception by Taz Smith Windsor. He's playing the halfback spot, and if you watch the two receivers, there's going to be cross motion, so the defenders have to sort out whether, there's, whether they're going to switch or stay with their guys. It means he's got to come a long way 
to get to this football to make a play. Fortunately, pressure leads to the overthrow. And that lands in his arms for his second INT of the day. This one a pick six. I've already made the right decision. He was looking for Owen Hurley short over the middle of the field, but just missed him with the pressure. Yeah, it's tough to be accurate with that heat coming. All right, here's Scott again, this time from the 22-yard line. The kick is up, and he nails that one through and out of the end zone. That would have easily made it if that was the first kick. We'll take a look once again at Smith Windsor making his way to the end zone. Little Selly. I'm yep. waiting for Davis to do the gritty. But I'll tell you what. Chez has got Dave Donaldson over there and his coaching staff, former CFL jack of all trades, but including former DB. So he's been working with, with that group. They were getting a lot of attention. I know they spent a little bit of time yesterday actually working on their celebrations. So they were, they were ready for that moment. Well, but yeah, but it didn't look special. <laughs> Dave Donaldson played receiver, defensive back, and was a CFL official at one point. Great to see him involved in coaching. That's uh, Matthew Jonah with the reception. Nick Panachev in at quarterback right now. Now the, the youth game, which is also a part of this project for CFC, they do that as a, a preliminary game. Dave Donaldson's son actually participating in that. Young guy, he got into some of the practices with the prospects for this game, despite the fact that these guys are a couple years older. And I'm told that he did not look out of place, just a little bit smaller than some of these guys. So we anticipate seeing him somewhere down the road. Mike Mihalik, former CFL lineman, had his young guy play in the youth game as well. Owen Hurley with the reception there. Panachev at quarterback, and you would have assumed that Panachev was gonna play the fourth quarter, but you saw after that last interception, Matt going to Harry Vardy and say, look, we're gonna sit you down for a little bit and just kind of get you seeing the game a little bit differently. I'm sure we'll see him again as the game goes here, but Panachev seems to have slowed it down here in the first couple of plays. Yeah, still lots of time left in this ball game if Team Dunnigan can put together a good drive here. Important third down gamble to try and keep it going. Panachev dropping back, keeps it, has a bit of room that closes in a hurry. Jeremiah Washington comes up from his cornerback spot to make the play. Malcolm Fraser also there in on the tackle. A big defensive play for Team White, a play that Coach Dunnigan's team absolutely needed. Fourteen players from this game in 2019 went on to play in the NCAA. They're still down there playing the, the biggest, both literally and figuratively. Albert Reese playing at Ole Miss or Mississippi State, I should say, in the SEC. And uh, many more wound up playing U-Sports as well. Yeah, it's been fascinating to, to see what some of these guys have done, including one of the quarterbacks, Callum Wither at Ohio University, following in the footsteps of Nathan Rourke and of course another Canadian quarterback Nathan's older brother Curtis Rourke on that Ohio roster as well but scouts on both sides of the border certainly watching Leo looking deep down the left sideline that one goes incomplete we do have some flags on the play could have been offside against the defense that play a bit of a freebie Tasman uh, sorry I should say Shaney Offside on the defense Five-yard penalty remains first down. Shaney Adekunle, the intended target, another player who's been playing both ways here from Harry Ainley. We've seen him play in the secondary and now some here at receiver as well. I yeah, get those reps in again, small rosters, and you know we have seen a couple of guys get nicked up in practices as well that, uh, that have led to shortages. It's particularly been in the secondary that have created the opportunity for a few guys to, to get some reps on both sides of the ball in this game. That brings up first and five. Joe Murphy, the ball carrier. Murphy gets the first down. Six foot, 200 pounds. Well, I know you need some love for your BC guys. So the all BC backfield here. We've got the kick out block from the H back. Micah Barker working across the formation. Joe Murphy from Vernon takes the handoff up the middle. Nice execution there in the run game. You called that just like how I thought you should. 
So Murphy started just four games at Vernon this year. Again, newcomer to football. He was playing, but as far as the starting running back, he played only four games at 600 yards in those games. And then in that Okanagan Championship, which his team wound up losing, 125 yards and two touchdowns in that game. Shaney Atakunle with the reception there. Very productive play right there on first down. Brings up second and short. Anthony Leo of the four quarterbacks has been extremely efficient. Yeah, he has, and impressive. And we've mentioned a few times, you know, this is a guy who's a coach's son. His father, Marcello Leo, former U Sports quarterback himself, coaches him at St. Andrews College. But Marcello used to coach at York University for a number of years. And so Anthony kind of grew up around the game. He said, you know, during practices and stuff when his dad was teaching guys, he didn't necessarily have time to explain them to his son who was there helping out and as a ball boy and so on. But he said he picked up a lot by osmosis and that a lot of the other coaches who may have time would kind of explain things to him a little further. And you see the, the nuances that he has picked up. Certainly a young man with a high football acumen, just great instincts for the game. 10 of 14, 145 yards, one touchdown through the air, one along the ground as well. Joe Murphy with a tough gain inside for the first down for Team White, who now crosses the 20-yard line trying to extend their lead, a 30-6 to six lead. Will there be any living with Davis on the panel well, if this is a one-sided game? Well, I'll tell you what. The, obviously, you and I are fortunate that we don't have to be on the panel. I'm on the panel next week. You know, I, Maddie, I think, will be... If Davis's team goes on to win this game, I think Maddie will be lobbying to do more games in the booth and spend far less time in studio. Pass deep into the end zone, a wide open Nick Shuchuk. The double move, how do you leave him that wide open? <laughs> yeah, no doubt this is the guy that everybody was, knew they should be watching with Team White in scoring position. <laughs> Yeah, I love the celebration. Yeah, Team Sanchez definitely spent a little bit of time working on the sellies. Yeah, no surprise there. No. <laughs> but you see here with the pump fake, Leo for the first fake, then the pump fake, and man, did they bite on that. Oh, sure did. We've seen Shuchuk make some grabs in traffic. But that one, wide open. One, Give the two, coaches credit two, for a good call. Good news. I got some good news and some bad news. Yeah. You've, been, you've been so damn good that you're done. For done. The, you're done. All right. What a, what a day. Congrats, Thanks, coach. Congratulations. Appreciate you. Congratulations. Appreciate you giving me the opportunity, man. Appreciate, Appreciate you trusting me. Got a baby. Appreciate that. Congratulations. Thank you. Ten catches, 137 yards, three touchdowns. Oh, yeah. Get paid, boy. Uh, all in a day's work for Nick Shuchuk. Let's go, well, man. You're gonna, you're gonna put that on tape. Like Ten it. receptions is enough to put on tape. <laughs> yeah, going to work. Stalks it like they're running the hitch. Little hitch and pitch. <laughs> hitch and go. My guess is they made that up on the sideline. I suspect that they did. Well, he absolutely delivered. And again, when you're playing against some of the best players in the country, that's pretty good to put on tape for Nick Shuchuk and show a number of collegiate scouts. And he's going to get a lot of interest. Every school in the country will want this kid because he, can, he shows up. He can catch it and he can, he can make you miss and make a play in so many different ways. Paul Condon breaks a few tackles, bounces to the right. Very good gain on first down. Crosses midfield, gets to the 41-yard line of Team White, a 29-yard run. That is the first first down of the half for Team Dunnigan. And nice run there for Paul Condon, Rockview High School in Airdrie, Alberta. Showing off a little bit of burst. Nice job by the offensive line, opening things up. And then it's Condon making a couple of people miss and turn on the Jets take the ball into Sanchez territory. Panachev this time with the fake, looks inside, has to pull it down before. That's uh, Ma Matthew Jonah with the reception. Yeah, I like that in terms of the play calling as well. A little bit of success in the run game. Come back with the play action right away. Quick hitter to Matthew Jonah. Create a nice second and short. 
very manageable second and short situation here. Again, important to get that execution, keep the drive alive, keep the momentum for Team Dunnigan. Panachev this time gives it to Condon. Condon makes a man miss in the hole. Big hit by Delorier. We have not talked about him enough, and not because he hasn't been making plays. We've just been talking about the offensive guys. This guy's incredible. Yeah, and you talk about some of the guys who will be very highly recruited, as a number of these kids will. But certainly making hits like this, Delorier will be among them. But big hit, but another big run for Mr. Condon as well to move the sticks. And again, just a, a 10th grade player, so he's got two more years of high school. You have to believe with Deloria's measurables now and what he could grow into that he could be a Division I football player. His film is impressive. Yeah, Matthew Shinetti alluded to it a little bit earlier when he talked about Deloria and the fact that he's playing with that, that bad thumb. He's got it taped up today. But, you know, again, this is a kid who looks the part already, obviously knows how to prepare for the game, terrific football player and has the measurables when you look at his his testing numbers like this is a kid who is athletic enough already to play at a higher level yeah he's got the instincts he's got the physicality there's not a there's not a trait missing for a linebacker he's a guy that's got a lot of football ahead of him this time the fake looks inside to jonah caught on the deflection nice heads up play and that is Blaze Cameron with the catch and gets down inside the five-yard line. A little fiery when he gets up. Yeah, Blaze Cameron getting a little fired up, but yeah, heads up. A big one to keep the drive going and get Team Dunnigan in close. Blaze Cameron gets himself noticed, almost gets himself a touchdown. And we take a look at the stats after three quarters in this ball game. Team Ch Sanchez with a commanding lead on the scoreboard. 224 passing yards for Team Chez doing a pretty nice job airing it out. I don't know if that's, uh, you know, a little bit of Chez as a former cover guy, knowing what the weaknesses are over on the defensive side of the ball. But good to see, good quarterback play. As you know, that's going to be a challenge in a game like this, but I've been impressed by what I've seen. Yeah, and we've certainly talked a lot about Nick Shuchuk, and we've talked about Antoine Delorier, but who are some of the other guys that that have stood out to you, especially on Team White, because there's been a lot of performances? Yeah, I think they've they've done a terrific job, obviously, on on both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, some guys I'll, I'll be looking for a little bit here in the, the fourth quarter of this ball game, in particular. Uh, Gabriel Andre is a guy who caught my eye during practices as well at, at linebacker. Yeah. Oh, Panachev rolls to his right in pursuit, and he is brought down. By who? Gabriel Andre. I... On cue. Yes. But we do have a penalty flag <laughs> on the play. Yeah. Is that a, a horse collar, or what are we thinking? It may have, it may have bought something here for, for Coach Dunnigan as they want to get play, back on the scoreboard. Taunting on the defense. Ten-yard penalty, second down. Wait a minute, they were okay with the dance with the entire team in the end zone, but we can't we can't celebrate here. Yeah, the the dead ball foul, but here keep an eye on Andre coming from that strong side linebacker spot. He recognizes rollout. You're gonna see his athleticism. This is a young man who's played everywhere: offense, defense, running back, receiver, DB receiver. You know, a little bit of talk, playing the game yeah. with, a, with a bit of confidence. He's from Sir Wilfrid Laurier High School in London, Ontario. But I asked him, what's your, what's your favorite position to play then? He said special teams. This guy absolutely yeah. loves special teams. Going out, the freedom of it, running around, making plays. All right, this time Panachev rolls to his left, has an open receiver, and it is caught. Touchdown, Charles Williams. Team Dunnigan back on the board. Well, they like this end zone and they like it at the start of quarters. Scoring down here on their opening drive of the ball game. And scoring again down here to open the fourth quarter. Panachev rolling to his left. Just drops it in there over top of coverage. Yeah, nice job of the receiver. Using his hands, going up to get it, not waiting for it and giving the defender a chance to make a play. I'm surprised here they're going for, going for one. Like that, being uh -huh. headasses. Yeah. What do colleges do when they see that? Do they uh, go like this, move okay. off the list. 
Uh, he's, he's, he's rolling the field. He's running stadium stairs. He's running through. He's puking. He's, he's demoted. Yeah. He's earning his way back on. Stuff like that. Maddie giving some life lessons down there. Yeah, that was Enzo Agostini on the other end of the conversation. This time the PAT is wide. Let's take another look. Yeah, certainly Williams. And pretty decent coverage there, challenge, but you see him go up and get that ball. Get it up high. Tegan Sadler, as you mentioned, the defender in good position from Drumheller Valley High School in Alberta. But throw was good, catch was good. PAT was not good, so it's 36 to 12 with still pretty much the entire fourth quarter here to play. Matthew Teal now in at quarterback for Team White. <laughs> Jeremiah Washington in the backfield here again. This time the fake looking to Micah Barker. Makes a nice adjustment for the reception before being brought out right at midfield. Micah Barker, a 95% student, and he's also a Star Wars nerd, according to his coach. <laughs> Not sure which Star Wars character fits in on that play, but pretty agile there to spin around, make the catch, and keep on going. I don't think the force was with Micah on that play, though, as he comes up limping at the end, heading to the sidelines. But he has, a pr has had a pretty good day, getting in a couple of touches, doing a nice job blocking. A provincial all-star in BC, almost 1,200 yards and 13 touchdowns in high school. This time, Teal in the scramble wisely throws it away. Parker with an offer from York already. Well, pressure coming from the, the two defensive ends on this one. Here you're going to see Enzo Agostini. Quick off the ball. He's there along with Danley Fenelon. Agost Agostini, by the way. Going old school, you know, I talked to a lot of the kids about who some of their favorite players were and so on. Huge Lyle Alzado fan. Come on. I kid you not. I kid you not. Not sure about that horse collar. Nice catch in the play by Jalen McDonald. Good enough for a first down. Back to Agostini. Plays at Bolinas High School in Parksville, coached by Jeremy Kahn out there. And he's actually on the debate team. He's won some debating competitions. In the, uh, he's, he's won awards for debating on the United Nations team, if you can imagine that. I, I actually uh, lost a bunch of weight. He was 245 a year ago, lost 40 pounds, said he wanted to be able to move like an athletic guy and be more athletic, and then he's put 40 back on, but good weight, right? So he's a guy that really is very analytical about how he plays the position and how he views football. He, he knows he's going to have to gain weight as he goes through high school. He wants to play right now at the weight he's comfortable at, but he figures he'll add that additional weight when he's in college, but he wanted to make sure he played with good weight this coming season. Yeah, and you see a big, tall guy with that length as a defensive lineman. He's certainly going to attract some attention going forward. 3.9 GPA, so he'll be able to get into any school in the country. But again, not sure about the horse collar. That's old school. <laughs> that is old school. Yeah, it was interesting talking to a number of the kids about, about some of their favorite players. And I was surprised with answers I got with how familiar they were with, you know, quite frankly, players that I would have watched growing up. But the world of YouTube has allowed them to be introduced to some of the history of the game. Jeremiah Washington had absolutely nothing. <laughs> Winds up with a yard, but made a couple of guys miss. An athletic, impressive play before he finally gets brought down. Well, I may get in trouble from Jeremiah for revealing this, but, you know, he has a secret not to be told to his dad, but we've seen him play running back and DB. You know, dad, of course, not only a D coordinator, but a former DB in the CFL, but Mark, Jeremiah likes offense a little better. <laughs> Well, he averaged over 10 yards a carry during the regular season, almost 180 yards a game, played seven games, 1,256 yards, 17 touchdowns, and did manage three interceptions on defense as well. Second and long, Teal scrambles to his right, looking to find an open receiver, and this one is intercepted. Raphael Ball with his second interception of the game. We've now got two 
defenders each with a pair of interceptions each. Yeah, and again, Raphael Dunn is a player. Some of the Quebec players, again, couldn't get here until late because they were writing provincial exams. Dunn was one of those. Limited opportunity to practice, but he is making the most of it here on game day. The fourth quarter is brought to you by the Fox 40 Prospect Challenge, CFC's premier annual football tournaments. As we get back into it here, almost 12 minutes to go still in the fourth quarter. Plenty of time for Team Dunnigan to narrow the gap right here. Yeah, Harry Vardy back in at quarterback for Team Dunnigan. So as we thought, getting an opportunity to have a look at some things from the sidelines. but. Getting a chance now to get back under center. Fumbles the hot snap, kicks it into the end zone. Not good here for Team Red. It is recovered in the end zone for a touchdown. Hayden Russell from Yorkton, Saskatchewan, every lineman's dream. Hey, there is a flag. Offside on the offense, the penalty is declined. He's out of the play, touchdown. And snap just got away a little bit from the quarterback, Vardy, and he's under siege from that Team Sanchez defensive line. Snap was a little high, but certainly catchable. But, you know, when you're thinking about other things and, you know, trying to forget about what happened on the last play, easy to let things get away from you a little bit. Yeah, much to process, as you mentioned, Hayden Russell. The man who comes up with the touchdown. And again, you want to talk a little bit old school. I talked to him about sure. being another Saskatchewan guy, of course, Riders fan. I asked him about <laughs> some of his favorite Saskatchewan pass rushers. He said, well, of course, Charleston Hughes in his time. But as a young guy, he also pulled out John Chick. Wow. Yeah. Very impressive. Lucas Scott on to attempt the PAT. Kick is up, and it's good. Let's see what Coach Dunnigan does right here. Do you want to talk to the quarterback for a little bit? Do you want to show him some more faith? Which way is he going to go? Just trying to calm him down. Let's freaking play ball. Okay, new day. Let's go. New series. Let's go. Same two play sequence. Okay? Same two play sequence. Good stuff. Get him back out there. Get him back on the horse. Yeah, as it should be. So much more to this game than simply who's going to wind up winning it. Uh, Davis won't admit that. But, you know, when you're Matt, Matt really appreciates the role of being a mentor and being a leader and the impact that he can make. And I think he made one right there. And Matt would be the first to tell you that there are, as a quarterback, you're not going to be perfect. Sometimes you're going to make mistakes and you need your coach to give you a chance to get back out there and do your thing. Absolutely. You know, the one thing a quarterback needs to do, and this is a smart thing, put him in a position to just run a comfortable play. He's an athletic kid, not much there, but certainly that's something he's comfortable with. You know, so we talked about the coordinated celebrations from Team Sanchez earlier. You know, and I think Hayden Russell was probably looking for more than one bowling pin to be involved in this one, but they, you know, they couldn't quite figure it out, but tell you what, he hit that one pin. Yeah, Last Malcolm, one Fraser. Standing. Malcolm Fraser was there. You know, it, it, it just hit the outside edge of him, so had there <laughs> been more, it Yeah, it he would have gotten that strike. Yeah. Play action fake, Vardy oh, underthrows no. Blaze Cameron a little bit there. That's gonna bring up third and long. You go for it here. Obviously a fairly one-sided score at this point, but nonetheless, you want to give Vardy another opportunity here. Third down to Team Dunnigan, 0 of 3 with an interception. Third and seven, he's going for it. Has the completion to Hurley, and he has the first down. Hey, you know what, love it, with some of the struggles that, that Vardy has had, to have the confidence to step up and make that throw on a third down gamble, that tells you a lot about this young man. Throwing a strike right here to move the sticks and keep the drive alive. Nice catch by Hurley there. 
who has really stood out for Team Red when you consider the fact that they're this far behind. Hurley's made some good plays in this game. That one an incompletion. Jeremiah Washington in coverage. And you, you see with that helmet on, you definitely see Mark's eyes. Oh, you do. There, yeah. peering out. <laughs> we haven't talked enough about Judy Washington, who's here watching this game. Mark, of course, prepping for uh, Hamilton's preseason action, but uh, Judy's here. She was at practice during the week. Vardy again steps back, looks to the right, has a receiver a little bit outside and overthrown. Williams can't come up with the catch. They went for it. They went for it last time on third and seven. We'll see if they go for it here on third and three after a really good effort from Williams. Yeah, Williams already with a touchdown in this ball game, surrounded by white jerseys, including Delorier, yeah. who seems to be <laughs> everywhere. Yes, seem white. Vardy has an open receiver this time. It is Jordan. Nice pass. Nice catch. Nice game. Yeah, nice execution Jonah. right down the rail. Matthew Jonah working the sideline. Vardy lays it up. And big gain here. Fights for that outside release. Washington, I think, reading, anticipating that it was going to be thrown to that flat underneath. And that's a terrific read by the quarterback. Common route combination. But if they're going to let that, that deep guy go, put it up. 38 yards on the pass and run. Now Vardy goes to his right. Doesn't find anybody. Takes off and goes. Beats the first man. Penalty flag on the play before Delorier eventually. Actually, that's Peters with the tackle right there. Grayson Peters out of South Kamloops High School in British Columbia. See if we're going to get a, a hold on the block here. Tough break for Team Red. Well, they've done a nice job on this drive. Their back's up against it a couple of times. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty, repeat first down. Oh, wow. Look who the cat drug in. <laughs> I think he's a great yeah. Providing defensive yeah. insight. Good to see it. Well, Mike Benavides yeah. making an appearance. No wonder that D's doing so well. <laughs> Marty drops back to pass, finds Hurley. Washington on the tackle along with Gabriel Andre. Gain of about six on second and 20, or first and 20. Yeah, and Hurley is one of those guys that's certainly been noticeable for Team Dunnigan in this ball game. Talked about his size as a receiver. Eight catches, 87 yards. That's Cameron Williams with the difficult catch in traffic. Both Washington and Delorier right there in coverage. That gets us to third and 10. I think they're going for it here. Well, they've found some third down success on this drive. See a third time on third down is a charm. Vardy looks left and throws it right to Delorier. Delorier could go. Vardy is the only man to beat. The hesitation, and this young man is going to go. Hurley there. Can he make the tackle? Brings him down inside the five. Antoine Delorier with another impressive play. Well, showing off the. Not only the football instincts, but the athleticism on that one. Taking that one back a long way before the receiver, Hurley, finally tracks him down. Wow. This kid does it all. Remember, he dislocated his thumb earlier in the week. Yeah, you'll see him from his linebacker spot, number 15, just gets underneath that out route to Hurley, reading the quarterback's eyes. Widening out in his drop and coming up with a big, big play. Impressive play by Hurley to stay with it. Looked like he was going to be able to shed the tackle, but Hurley stayed right there and is going to force him to work for it a little bit here if they're going to score again. Yeah, a playing with one hand. Return. Play with one hand, no problem for Antoine Delorier. Making tackles, making picks, whatever it takes. Again, young man who dislocated his thumb on the first day of practice. 
That's our Quebec defense. I guess he's getting the same thing you got there. Yeah. Let's take another look at this one. Curious to see if it got tipped right at the edge. Because the ball wobbled before Delorier caught it. There's Delorier. Nope. That weak side linebacker spot just gets underneath. Little stutter step to beat the quarterback, but there you see Hurley reels him in. He's going for the strip. And then realizes I better just try and bring this guy down before he crosses the goal line. The team MVP this past season for the provincial champion, Harry Ainley High School out of Sherwood Park. Did he want to end that? You okay? He might be making a run for the MVP with Shuchuk. <laughs> it's going to be hard to take that away from Shuchuk. Yeah, those are some pretty big numbers for the Salisbury High School receiver. First and goal from the three-yard line, Matthew Thiel at quarterback. Micah Barker in the backfield. We'll see if they try to pound it in here. Barker with the carry. He is into the end zone for the touchdown. Micah Barker, the big man from Robert Bateman. Favorite player is Derrick Henry. Pretty much similar dimension, 6'3", 225. Oh, nice to see the big back get an opportunity. Mixing things up back there, lowers his shoulder. Gets in behind that offensive line for the score. I like Aura Kadudu coming across the formation for the block. Probably a block he's not asked to make that much because <laughs> he's, he's going to be touching the ball a lot more than he's doing that, but impressive that he can come across and work that backside edge. Uh, and Ora Kadudu getting most of his reps as a receiver here, but he's actually primarily a running back on that Harry Ainley team. They're so deep at receiver, but the guys on that team talk about how much they throw the football. And about 85% of the time, I know he... Or Kadudu suggested, you know, maybe I could get some, some more carries here, but here he finds himself blocking for a guy who outweighs him by about 50 pounds. Scott pushes it just wide so they don't get to 50, but the lead is comfortable for Team Sanchez. Here's a look at a guy with a great future in front of him, Antoine Delorier with a 97-yard pick six, almost scored, certainly set up a touchdown. And uh, here's Matthew Shinetti with a guy that also knows a thing or two about defense. Yeah, I'm in a great position, Farhan, to break down what Antoine Delorier did because, look, it's Mike Benavides, the defensive coordinator for the Ottawa Red Blacks coach. Uh, after seeing that play from 15 White, what do you think about his talent? Well, he's extremely talented. You could say you can see he's really developed physically, and you see the burst he had as soon as he pulled across right here in the field. And uh, he's an extremely talented young man. He's got a bright, bright future. Now, how about the coaching talent of a certain Davis Sanchez? We've uh, got 49 on the board here. How, how, how do you think he's been? Have you given him any tips? Well, trying to give Sanchez tips, it's not going to work. He played for me. He's going to make great plays as it is. I mean, 49-12, uh, he's doing an outstanding job. He said I should be worried about my job, so I don't know what that means, but he's doing a hell of a job, and uh, he relates well with the kids. He always has. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's a little boasting from uh, Davis Sanchez on that. I think your job is safe, Benny. Um, with your own Red Blacks team, Kwaku Boateng, uh, obviously an unfortunate injury. How do you guys adapt going forward? Yeah, tremendously devastated by that, obviously. Really devastated for the individual. But those things happen, and we'll just adapt. There's going to be opportunities for other young men to step up and fill that void. Obviously, we're excited about what he could do to the table and use, be used in the rotation. But um, it's an opportunity for someone else, unfortunately. But uh, we're praying for Kwaku's uh, quick recovery. Thanks, Benny. Thank you. And an impressive interception by Jeremiah Washington. The guy's done it all in this game. We've seen him on the offensive side. Here he is on defense. Nice play by the son of the defensive coordinator of the Hamilton Ticats. Yeah, just coming from the outside, stepping in front of Matthew Delello there to make that pick as they try to throw it underneath, but just, or excuse me, Adam Delello, but doing a nice job making the read from the outside, cheating off his man to come and make a play on the inside receiver. You see Davis Sanchez over there with his D coordinator for this game. That's Joe Cappiello from the University of Toronto, Coach Cap, who's a real 
perfect. brains behind this defensive the, success with all due reason. respect great, to great Coach Chez. Great read. Hey, you've been, you've been well coached. And I'm not talking about me. That <laughs> a baby. Great play. Great play. Heck of a, heck of a catch, too. Good job. Good job. He's been well coached since he was quite young, <laughs> not just at STM. That's full credit to Judy, by the way. Amen to that. Fine young man, too, as we said. We had a chance to talk to Jeremiah a little bit, and Mark and Judy have done a terrific job raising this guy. Extremely humble young man. First sport, Canadian hockey. He's apparently, he's apparently a great chef. Man of many talents. We out here, yes, sir. Another kid with a bright future. I'm guessing he'll qualify as a Canadian. Matthew Teal, looking to the left. Underthrows Josiah Halliburton. You know, and you're at this stage, I mean, it's not about winning and losing right now. Everybody wants to make plays still, right? It's, you, there's still that opportunity to make plays against elite players. Put that in your highlight film as all of these guys are looking to play football at the next level. Well, and one of the number one things that every coach is going to look for, how do you compete, right? How do you compete on every snap? Well, this guy has no problems competing. Joe Murphy... Breaks a couple of tackles, fights his way for four yards before the flags come out. You know, I know in terms of looking at players leading up to the CFL draft, and of course all the players in this day and age post their, their highlight videos on Huddle, on YouTube, and so on. And the highlight videos are great because they give you an idea of what a guy can do, but the evaluations are made off game film, right? Don't just show me your best plays. I want to see what you're doing on your worst plays as a receiver when the ball's not coming to you, as a defensive back when the ball's plays yep. going the other way. You know, D lineman, are you giving up after your first move gets stopped on a pass rush and, and so on? roughness, face mask on the offense, the defense chooses to consume the play, 15 yards, third down. So they got the yards and the down, it would appear. Meanwhile, Coach Sanchez's team sends out the punting unit. I think I'll play again next year because they're all in great pen. <laughs> Justin Wilski, the long or Wilski, this long snapper for the white team. See if we can get a big play out of the red unit here. Matthew Jonah deep to receive. Blaze Cameron also back there. Another timeout, it appears. What's that? You're short of guys, or are you just being nice? Yeah, we were short of guys. <laughs> no, we're it's 11 on 11, that's fair. All right. We had 10. We had 10. Yeah, we, we still want to get a guy. We, st we still want another get a guy. Yeah. We're down one guy. Both teams having some, some personnel challenges. You get guys banged up a little bit over the course of the game, so. Well, you can't have a full two deep here <laughs> with, seven, <laughs> no. with 70 kids, 35 on each side. <laughs> Lucas Scott back to kick. Mm -hmm. Ready. High kick that Matthew Jonah is able to field. Looks like a no yards flag there as well before he is brought down. Gabriel Andre with the tackle. Uh, Gabriel Andre told me he loves special teams and puts his money where his mouth is, getting down there to make the play on Matthew Jonah. Here's a look at two guys that have A, enjoyed this, but B, done a lot in their Great football job. careers. Great job. Oh. Well, they have a couple of Canadian football legends down there, and great to see Maddie and Chez giving, giving something back to the game right here. And you know, it, 
that's something that these guys have both always been committed to, mentoring, helping young guys when given the opportunity. And, and I know they've enjoyed their, their practice and game days out here regardless of score. You know, and Matt, of course, has, has been a Tommy, professional Tommy. coach before, spending the time he did in Calgary. And, you know, that bug doesn't leave you. So for him, this is a chance to get his fix. And, and he's, he's got to get a win in this series, though. Well, the, you know, this is it. We, you know, we talked about Matty being holed up, drawing up plays, strategizing, getting ready for this one, not even taking the time to shave. <laughs> that is clean white. It's not speckled. It's clean white. Well, you know, people during the practice week, as we... Oh, here we go. Big shot. There we go. Matthew Jonah on the receiving end from Nick Panachev. Touchdown, Team Dunnigan. Matthew Jonah getting Harry Ainley on the board. Uh, you knew they wouldn't be held down for the entire game. This is another one. Jonah right down the sideline. Play action fake. Panachev puts it up. Jonah in behind coverage. We knew we were going to see some gritty at some point today. Yeah, major number three for Team Dunnigan. Jaden Rice from Heritage High School in St. Mathis, Quebec. On to attempt the PAT. Like I said, doesn't matter the score at this point. There's always an opportunity to make a play and have some fun. Yes, sir. Every snap counts. And good for Nick Panachev bouncing back through the interception, which was a really good play by Jeremiah Washington, but nonetheless for him to come back with the touchdown pass. Well, we talked about the competition thing earlier on, and I was taught very early on. Basically, your game film is your resume. You know, and the job you're applying for in this situation, these guys want to play college and university football. What you put on tape is your resume, regardless of the score. Team Dunnigan, down by a big chunk, but coming up with some big plays late here. You know, and when you're a quarterback, and again, they've thrown some interceptions, both Vardy and, uh, and Panachev, the, the hardest thing for a quarterback is to just keep on slinging. Yeah. And it's not as though Matt hasn't thrown his share, certainly not nearly as many as he has yards or touchdowns, but when you do that, you've got to have that ability to just forget about it and just keep on slinging. Well, mental toughness is such a huge part of the game, and, and Matty is a guy who has personified that and I'm sure is passing those lessons on to the quarterbacks that he's working with this week. Matthew Teal at quarterback. Looks like offside. He takes a shot down the field. Incomplete. Gabe McEnroy, uh, McEnroy the intended target. Offside on the defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Yeah, once again, it's recognition that it's a free shot. That's the first line Looking to air it out. The ball on their 45-yard line. 3.47 remaining in the fourth and final quarter. First and five now. Just over three and a half minutes remaining. Washington takes the hand up, almost squeezes inside where there may have been some space, but eventually gets brought down by Nevin Brown. Yeah, Brown getting in there, Fenelon as well. Making the play. Jeremiah getting his, getting his touches on the defensive side, now coming <laughs> back over saying, let me have some carries on the offensive side. Yeah, I expect to see Team Sanchez coming down the stretch here. Let that old line go to work. Try and close this one out. Time count this time. Remain second down. Should be one more play here before we hit the three minute warning. Second and eight now, so you know they're going to be throwing. 
Again, defensively only allowed to bring a maximum of one blitzing linebacker. We'll see if Team Dunnigan tries to turn up the heat. And that is the three minute warning, which means we will take a quick break. When we come back, we will wrap up the CFC Prospects game here in Ottawa. Game MVPs are brought to you by Fox 40. Fox 40 Classic Official is the original peeless referee whistle. And really no surprise here, the offensive and defensive MVPs will start on offense. Nick Shuchuk didn't even get to the end of the third quarter. 10 catches, 137 yards, and three touchdowns. And on the defensive side, Antoine Pruno. We don't have all his tackle numbers, but you, you, got, the, you, had you a lot. got the wrong Antoine. I know you're feeling it. Oh, in, did I in say Pruno? Stadium. I'm in Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> Antoine Delorier, sorry. Yeah, Delorier, terrific job. Number of tackles highlighted by that 92 yard interception return. Big day for the 10th grade linebacker. And that's the thing that's so amazing. He's got two more years of high school football left in him. And uh, class of 2024, we're going to be talking. If he wants to play in this game next year, we'll give him our own personal invitation. <laughs> okay, both he and Jeremiah Washington, let's give him the invitation right now for next year. Yeah, a couple of the young guys, the 06s, representing here. And we haven't had an opportunity to have a repeat performer because the first game of this uh, CFC Prospects game was in 2019. Obviously, we didn't play in 2020 and not in 21 either. So we'll probably see more of that as we go forward here. Yeah, no doubt about that. I think it's been a terrific experience for the players involved. Kieran and McDonald exactly. leaving the field with an injury. Keep running those twist games. There's a great story along the offensive line for Team White right now of the one player that we've got here from <laughs> Prince Edward Island. Yeah. In at left guard right now, number 76, Noah Stanley, about six foot four, 300 pounds. He's been playing six man football in Prince Edward Island. Jeremiah Washington, the carry. Jeremiah's got some room. That closes in a hurry. And here we'll take a look at the work of our man, Noah Stanley along that offensive line. Big man takes pride in his run blocking. He said to me, there's, you know, I want to move somewhere to play at a more competitive level of football and no disrespect to the, the level that I'm, I'm playing at at home, but he said there's no Friday night lights in Prince Edward Island. There's just Sunday night potato field football. He's moving to play at Duncanville, Texas next year the school sure. has 4,000 students yeah. it is a big <laughs> classification big time texas high school football you think he might have some culture shock there, i'm sure there may be a little bit of culture shock there but he's a, a young man who's very proud of where he's from and wants to wants to represent and as he described it to me wants to create a little bit of a pathway for more opportunities in football for players from pei well good for him he says when he when he plays six-man football He's the entire offensive line. <laughs> like there's him, and then there's four receivers and a quarterback. And he says, sometimes I block out as the center. Sometimes I pull out and block to the side against the <laughs> defensive end. And hey. Well, you know, I, I said to Noah yesterday, as I mentioned, he's about 6'4", 300 pounds. And he was telling me how his dad was very involved in, in rugby. I said, oh, is, is your dad a big guy too? He looked me right in the eye and said, my dad's 5'7". <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Well, good story for him. I'm looking forward to hearing about his Texas escapades. That should be a lot of fun for the young man. Harry Vardy back in at quarterback. Looking for Jonah in the flat. Yeah, just unable to squeeze that one as he was working back towards the ball. Jonah with the touchdown earlier on the receiving end of that Nick Panachev pass. Yeah, a couple catches on the day for him. Good for Vardy to be able to finish here. You know, hasn't, uh, probably hasn't been the performance he was expecting. And really, it's just a couple of plays that make you feel so bad about what you've done. But in reality, he's done a lot of good things in this game as well. Yeah, he certainly has. Condon, the ball carrier. Yeah, Condon's had a nice second half here. Mm -hmm. You know, and just un unfortunate that obviously given the score, limited opportunities to, to run the football. 
We mentioned Ashton Watson got the first touches of this game at running back, but Condon's had to really carry a lot of the load here since early on after Watson suffered a foot injury after scoring the game's first touchdown. Tasman Smith-Windsor with the tackle. He's had a very good game, as has Owen Harley. Makes a nice catch there on the pass from Vardy. Well, we've oh, seen... is that Jonah or is that... That was Jonah. Yeah, I know. You keep seeing those Harry Ainley helmets. I know. Well, there's a big height discrepancy <laughs> between Jonah and, and, yeah, uh, and Hurley. Yeah, from our, uh, our press box perspective, he was in traffic there. You just see the helmet rise above yeah. the crowd. But, you know, we've seen Jonah down the sidelines with a couple of catches today, including that touchdown. They're showing off his work across the middle. Condon again, cuts to his left, breaks a tackle. Yeah, a good hard run there again from Condon. Gabriel Andre with the tackle. Andre told me that he, or I shouldn't say he told me, we were told he was the MVP of the uh, red-black game, or the red-white game, I should say, which is the final selection event for Team Ontario. So he was the top player at that game, which when you're talking about Team Ontario, there's obviously going to be uh, a number of quality football players that you're picking from there. Condon again bounces to his left. Doing Rockview High School proud. Yeah, no question. From Airdrie, Alberta. Uh, and this is, this is what I mean when you talk about noticing those guys who compete hard right to the right to the end regardless of situation yeah and, and honestly if team sanchez scores here this is not running up the score this is just giving every kid a chance to make a play sorry team dunnigan i should say so it's not running up the score they're trying to come back jonah breaks the tackle almost into the end zone oh they they're marking him out early at around the seven yard line on between jonah from edmonton and Condon from Airdrie, the all Alberta drive here as they try to get another major before this game is over. Let's try this again. They did, in fact, mark him out at the two yard line. Inside of a minute to go. First and goal for Team Dunnigan. Condon, the ball carrier, stretches out. In for the touchdown. A nice reward for the young man who has battled hard all day. Yeah, he certainly has. And again, he's much like the offensive lineman, a guy who's had to play most of the snaps in this football game and continuing to impress here in the fourth quarter. Gets over 100 yards, 12 carries for 101 yards. Nice performance. You know, and in terms of competition, this is as good as, as, good as he's going to see for the most part. Yeah, you know, you talk to, to a few of the players about that and, you know, being from Airdrie, they don't necessarily see some of the big schools in Calgary. Competition can be a little bit spread out. And just a great opportunity for these guys to, to not only test themselves, but develop and improve themselves against some of the other best players in the country. They went for two there. Vardy with the attempt to Williams falls incomplete. But a nice way for Vardy to finish this game as well with a touchdown drive. Yeah, no question about that. Again, fighting through some adversity and continuing to get it done. Dad Joel played at Guelph University. Obviously, he's a big fan of how Russell Wilson plays the game. Also a basketball and a rugby player. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, once again, I can't say enough about what a great opportunity this is for the youngsters involved. You know, I was just talking about that opportunity for some of the guys who are not from big centers to, to get out and see some other competition, but also a good opportunity for them in places where sometimes you may fly under the radar from a recruiting perspective. You know, a number of youth sports coaches were out for a recruiting event, an opportunity to, to see a lot of these players in person, meet with them, get to see them play, get to know them. So big opportunity in that way as well. 
And the way they select the players from this team, CFC does their, their top 100. They know who the top players are. They've seen their film. They've got regional recruiters, but then they've also got showcase events, which they run around the country. Combine type activities where you test, you get electronically tested, so they're valid. It's not, there's no discrepancy across the country. That way you do the one-on-one -on -one competitions. So there really is a, a number of different ways you can get selected, but they, they generally don't miss. I mean, there are some players that certainly are quality and good enough to be here that aren't here for other reasons, but they know who the top players are. Yeah, there's no question about that. CFC has done a, a terrific job and they get better every year in terms of being right on the mark with their rankings. A big part of my draft prep every year for the Canadian Football League draft is going back four or five years and looking at the CFC rankings. And, you know, you will notice a lot of the top names on draft day were a lot of the top names in the CFC 100 four or five years earlier. And you just never know how these young men are going to develop because a lot will happen. Even in a short shelf life of a 2024, where you've still got two years left between now and high school, uh, guys are going to come up. They're going to improve. Other guys mm -hmm. might get injured. They might, you know, they might have felt they played too much football. You just don't know which way any of these players is going to go. But uh, just getting to this stage and getting to this game today uh, is an impressive accomplishment for all of them. Yeah, no doubt. Matthew Teal in the game, Joe Murphy behind him. He's got the carry. Fights for a couple of yards on third down. And that'll give Team Red, Coach Dunnigan's team, one or two final plays here with eight seconds to go in the game. Yeah, a couple more chances to try and close that gap. Make that scoreboard read a little happier and maybe make life a little happier for Maddie on the uh, on the, panel. the CFL on TSN studio the set. I'm putting the call in tomorrow. He <laughs> <laughs> look good. He look good in the Ducks uniform. David Sanchez, the former Oregon Duck. Yeah, doing a little recruiting down there. I find it shameless when guys talk a lot about their former universities. And... <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, would, I couldn't imagine anybody who does that. Blaze Cameron oh, whoa, whoa. with the reception, and Davis Sanchez with the shower. Oh, Fellas. they put one second back in the clock, oh, Davis. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Man, whatever. We'll get their water. Ma oh. Manage the I clock, Coach Sanchez. Them. Manage the clock. Play I until the final Coach play. Like, you got to know it's coming. And I had no idea. All right. You're still focused. That's right. <laughs> the, focus, <laughs> the focus is real. <laughs> Maddie looking forward to his first shower at this event. <laughs> Yeah, I'll Maybe tell you what, year. it's part of the enjoyment for me in this, honestly, is watching Maddie and Chez interacting with these kids, with the university coaches as well in the prep for this ball game. And it means so much to everybody involved. Let's go, hey, let's go shake hands, let's go shake hands. Let's go. Thank you, good pleasure, Thank you. Guys. Hey, thank you. Hey, nice shot today. Way to compete. Party. Way to compete, man. Hey, a lot of life lessons we learned out here, man. Yeah. Hey, thank Pleasure. you. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you. Team Sanchez with the win, 49-24. It is the second ever and hopefully annual CFC Prospects game here in Ottawa. Thank you so much to the players, the coaches, all the organizers for this event. A great time was had by all and great football played by everyone in attendance. Don't forget to tune in to the CFL on TSN all season.